Hunter. Good morning. Good morning. We'll bring this work order to uh, we will bring this work session to order. Good <laughs> 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 my words oh, already. Yeah. Yes. Um, I hope everyone had an amazing weekend and we'll get started. We have a pretty robust schedule today, so I ask that we be uh, just mindful of just your time. Uh, the first is particularly with our updates for our various departments and, and our committees, if we could just make sure we stay within a five-minute time frame on those. Because if not, we'll be here all night. We have 32 items on the agenda as well. So we'll get started today. Uh, we have public comment for Yes, ma'am. We have two individuals who signed up for public comment, and I ask um, that we remain civil as we present to the Board of Commissioners this morning. And I won't read our long dissertation for our, uh, our citizens when they come up, but just civility is just important to me. And I believe our first um, person on the agenda is Mr. Thomas Miller. Mr. Miller, would you please come up to the podium? And if you could just state your address and your subject matter. Um, my address is 3234 West Anderson Drive, Lithia Springs, Georgia, 30122. And uh, the reason I'm here is signage. Um, so uh, I operate a small business out of my home. And the way they're forcing the law of signage is that they're saying the wrapping on my work van is not within code. And they have cited me for that. Um, they've given me a warning and I moved the van off site. But this doesn't just affect me, it affects everybody who drives a service van in Douglas County, how they're enforcing this law. So for instance, I own Cash Plumbing and it says Cash Plumbing on the side of it. It's not parked in the front of the yard or anything like that, it's in my driveway. It's, uh, but they're enforcing it as though I have a sign that is prohibited and uh, that is section 703, and it is considered a vehicular sign, which is prohibited in a residential area. So that means no service tech in the county can park their van at their home, and that just seems silly. So, and that's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, we appreciate you and we'll take this matter under advisement. Actually, we'll speak to our code enforcement just to kind of look at your complaint uh -huh. and then we'll uh, respond accordingly. Okay. All right. Thank I, you. I appreciate you coming in today. Yep. Okay. Last but not least, we have Mr. Larry Pierce. Mr. Pierce, if you could please come forward and let us share. Keep going. Okay. And, four shifts up. and he stepped out. He's gone. Oh, he's gone. Never mind. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. Pierce. Uh, Please give us your address, please. And please state your name and your subject matter is. And I'll let, I will deal with thunder. Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, I'd, I'd like to say something before my time starts. I'd like to compliment the board and Madam Chair coming to the Gravity Games. Y'all missed a heck of a lot of fun. I'm telling you, I love mechanical things. That's the first one I've been to. And I mean, the cars, the things they did, <coughs> put together by Google, and how they set it up in one evening and night, and the cables all over, the food courts, uh, pizza truck, and it was gone after I left Martin's within a couple hours. Uh, it was fantastic. Y'all missed a, a good time, whether you've got kids or not. If you like mechanical stuff, it was fantastic. And, and, and I think uh, next year I'm going to have a car that is going to be really remarkable. You're allowed to enter into what they call an adult class. The car can be 400 pounds, <laughs> not counting the driver. <laughs> so you can build any car, six foot long, six foot high, seven foot long. Anyway, it was really a lot of fun. Okay, thank you. Now, now for my business. Um, you know, so you go along and uh, sometimes you wonder, when, when are you gonna step on somebody's toes? Well, like I say, you never know. But I'm really, really perturbed with what happened in the past two weeks. Now we know Judge Emerson has signed a lot of orders, and we know he impaneled a jury. 
And I want to read you something that's real important. My old law book, my little posy. Laws never change, but they sometimes are revised. The law of juries is, is in chapter 15, 12, primarily 12. In 101, there's a footnote down here. It says, member of the grand or petite jury as officers within constitutional or statutory provisions in relation to oath and affirmation. Now, what that means is that when a jury is impaneled, not the kind that finds fault with, with crime, this is a special jury. This is a special jury that says, you have my blessing of the people to go find what you need to find. There are no bounds. Get that. There are no bounds. If you stood on the beach and you see the horizon, you don't know where it's at. And if you get higher, you can see further. So I am really disturbed with this. And I tried my best not to say a name. But I got to because Channel 2 did it. Channel 5 did a fair finding. Channel 2 was slanted, in my opinion. And it says here that Mr. Bernard finds fault if they overstep their bounds. Now, if Mr. Bernard was acting on himself, okay. But I don't think he was. I think he has understanding of people he should check with. He should. Uh, so consequently, when that statement was given to Channel 2, you cannot overstep your bounds. There are no bounds. They never found anybody guilty or innocent. It was a fact-finding mission. You find things, in your windows, whatever it might be, rumors, and they have piles of stuff <coughs> to look at from, from July to on. You've, yes, ex you've exceeded your time. Okay, can I finish this one statement? One, okay, one statement, please. Okay. I would like to compare this to when Jesus went into the temple mm -hmm. and he overturned the tables and ran the money changers out. You don't criticize that. Yes, sir. And you surely don't do it in a church or a synagogue. You don't do it. So to criticize the fact-finding jury that represented the people is wrong. And Madam Chair, I would really like for you to apologize to the citizens. Maybe it's understood. Maybe I'm under misunderstood. But I know what people are telling me. And I know what I search for. And I really uh, mean that from Thank my you, heart. I, I really do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Thank you. All right. We'll take this Thank matter you. under advisement. And we appreciate your contribution to county government. Um, next, we have a SPLOS cash flow analysis by Al Jennifer Alman. Is that for tomorrow? Or is it today? It's actually uh, Terry from Warland Alpha. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. That, okay. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Terry Good Gable from Warland Alpha Belly. And yes, this will be a little bit different than uh, my normal monthly SPLOS update. The focus over the past couple of weeks has primarily been on. Um, Reforecasting uh, <coughs> cash flow uh, and trying to dig down into that a little bit deeper uh, as we move through the program. I've got a couple of highlights here, some points I want to bring out before I kind of get into it and go through what you have in front of you. Uh, so we're about middle <coughs> ways through the program. We're in the third year, um, the nine months of the third year. Um, and we've been tracking the program up to this point on an annual basis. Uh, we've been tracking uh, revenues versus budget versus project schedules, and everything has been fairly solid up to this point. We haven't really made any changes. Um, but as we as we went through, the, the revenues have been solid, but they've only been slightly above, <coughs> above projections. And the cost of materials, as everybody knows, in labor has gone up. So we needed to drill down into it a little bit more and take a little bit closer look at it, primarily, too, to figure out project schedules as we move into the fourth year of the program. That's year that we all been talking about. We knew it was going to be uh, a tight year with, with the bond obligations and, and, and paybacks on that. So with that, I've been working with Jennifer and Mark, and we've come up with a little more detailed uh, tracking system. We're looking at it now on a monthly basis, and as we move from this point on towards the end of the year, uh, we'll, it, it really does tie the, the revenues in uh, by month with the project schedules. It allows us to kind of move it back and forth and see where we're at and see where the low points are going to be. So what you have in front of you is, is our schedule. There's um, the, the first page is the main 
uh, the main spreadsheet, and I'll, I'll go through that in just a second. But we start the, the, the balance started on the spreadsheet is September of this year. Uh, we start the revenues there, and we're, we're going to break them down and look at them through the rest of the, uh, through the program. Um, the beginning balance is based on actual revenues versus expenses uh, plus the, the bond proceeds. So it's broken down monthly uh, with projected revenues, uh, project expenses, and debt service. And then it's broken down, um, again, we have project schedule shown on the, um, on the spreadsheets. So what I have now just the, is the, uh, the main spreadsheet that you have on your, in, in front of you. And I'll, I'll kind of take you through it as we look at it in detail. So um, in reading it from left to right, the <coughs> first column there is a month. And again, these are going to be broken down by month. Um, and then we'll have the month with the collections at the next column. And then the beginning balance is shown in red there. And the, uh, the balance, again, is, is actual revenues and actual expenses to date. Mm -hmm. And everything moving forward is going to be, is going to be projections. Uh, our projections on revenues and projections for what we think project expenses is going to be and schedule. So we should move across the, uh, the spreadsheet to be the, like the, for example, in September, the monthly collection is projected to be a little over $2 million. The beginning balance uh, in October was $34.7 million as we move across the spreadsheet. So the, the available uh, money for debt service and project expense is going to be $36.7 million. The debt service for that month, if it's, if it's an expense that's going to in, be incurred during that month, it'll be shown. Um, the next column is pay go to the cities. <clears throat> and then as you move on across the spreadsheet, the, the fire department is next. It'll be a monthly expense there with transportation, parks, and recs, and then program management expenses, and then an ending balance for that month. And as you move down through the program, you come over to the next month, that brings the total back over to the balance. It'll start over with the revenues for that month. And again, you move it back from left to right, back across, and then working out your, uh, your expenses and your debt, and then you'll end up with a balance uh, for that month. So the main thing and the key points we're looking at here as we move through the program is the uh, balances at the end of the year and we're tracking any of the low points uh, for the uh, revenues also. So at the end of the third year, we're looking at uh, right at $21.9 million that we're looking um, to have in total revenues after all the expenses. And then as we start year four, with that, and we work through year four that what we've projected, um, and I showed, again, I just showed these two years the, uh, the low point in year four, which is, was the critical point, was $2.7 million. And we, when we were working and looking at all the prep project schedules and what we needed, the key points we needed to um, move out or keep in, mm -hmm. uh, we held it at that. That was a low point. We held it at. And then as we move on through uh, year four, we end up with a balance of $4.156 million. So once we, get, we got through year four, we felt like we were in pretty good shape. Over the rest of the rest of the year, what you also have um, in front of you is each program, and it's th these are broken out a little bit different. Uh, we have one for fire, and one for transportation, and one for parks. Um, this one's the fire uh, spreadsheet, and it's again it's broken out by a month. It's got all the projects that are programmed at, at the top. And this will show you the expenses that we're anticipating for that month um, and under whatever project we've got programmed uh, for that particular uh, department. And then over to the right is the balance for the month. And then that, that, uh, that, that dollar amount is moved over to the main spreadsheet. And that's how we built, we built, the, we built that spreadsheet. This slide right here is just showing it's a summary of 
the the totals for uh, all six years. We're showing a seventh year because you have a balance at the end of the sixth year uh, that will carry over to that seventh year. So the main the main thing to look at here is really is the the ending balance, which we 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 again we work to try to keep the balances out of the negative as we looked at projects and moving projects. So everything we everything worked out uh, as we hoped hoped it would, and then year four we we maintained about a four point one million dollar uh, balance uh, and kept it out of the negative. So what we have in place right now will work with the projected revenues and the projected expenses that we we feel like we're going to be seeing for the rest of the program. And then to summarize it, we some of the key impacts to the current schedule of the current program is obviously we work in, in year forward trying to keep that that uh, low point um, as low as we could but not not in the negative in year four we got down to 2.7 million dollars at that point we started looking at what we needed to reforecast and reschedule we have lee road uh, the funding starting in october of 20 of next year with a proposed let date of june uh, of next year we we moved out one fire truck from year four to year seven uh, it allocates five hundred thousand dollars for resurfacing in year four it allocates 1.5 million dollars for resurfacing in year five and then it allocates three million dollars in year six and seven for resurfacing uh, that brings for the resurfacing program that does bring it up to the 18 million dollars that was uh, set aside for resurfacing for the overall program once you look at it um, so with that it, just a quick summary of kind of where we're at and what Mark and Jennifer I'll be looking at and I'll open it up for questions and, and comments Questions, Vice Chairman Robinson. I believe you have a question. Yes, yeah, I, and I'll be very tight because again, it's going to be a long day. All right, so um, <clears throat> this was important um, as an exercise. Um, when we first started the SPLOS, we had a certain set of assumptions about what we thought the future would be. We had a certain set of projects that we wanted to tackle based on um, known information at that date. Over time, there's something called the value of perfect information. As you learn more, you make better decisions. Um, the, the more detailed the information you get, the more accurate you can be in your forecasting. So um, to your point, um, keeping it up at an annual basis, is like that's, that's too high level. That's too general, that's too general. You need to be more at a monthly basis to be able to do this. And I know sometimes we in um, you know, local government, you know, sort of like, well, that's private sector, but remember project <laughs> management came out of NASA. <laughs> It came out of government. So some of the best practices that are applied, it's like we, we can't run from it, right? We, we, you just can't, I mean, we're, we've grown and advanced to a point as a county that you just can't get away with that anymore. You just can't manage that way, right? And so one of the things is that I'm, I'm not reading, I'm, I'll be done with my statement. I'm looking at this guy, God, this thing is gonna go off a cliff if y'all don't get better numbers. That's on leadership to demand and for staff to respond, you gotta be at you gotta do better than that. Gosh, you can't just say, well, that's good enough. Well, we we like guys, this thing will go off the cliff the way you I mean, that's the point where I appreciate this exercise and you gotta you gotta understand why I have been harping for the past six months, like, no, you gotta do better than that. Right? If if you know, I come out of banking, right? I'm the one that first union why COVID were merging, I'm the one that I didn't make the decision, but I'm the one that pulled the integration plan together. Two banks, 11th, 7th Creek, the fourth nation's fourth largest bank. You cannot tell me it couldn't be done, right? And it, it, it need to be way more accurate than what we got. And it's like, this ain't that hard. Take the time. Yes, staff, I mean, the consensus of the, uh, the Board of Commissioners is to move something, to make a decision. It, you're not locked in stone. This is not dogmatic. This is not biblical. It can't move. It's like, no, we made a decision to change this. I mean, adjust and tell us what that implication is going to be. You've known that we changed something, but you're keeping the same forecast. It's like, guys, that's going to go off the cliff. So, Madam Chair, just respectfully, it was important that we go through this exercise to get the accuracy. I'm very pleased with what we got now. We got a little bit better lens of looking at how we're managing it, and I think we should all be comfortable. As I always say, just get the numbers right. Let, let, let leadership deal with what it has to do with, but don't withhold information. So, I just I ask that. 
um, that this be accepted into the record, that this is a tool we'll use going forward, and that it's not managed annually, just but monitored monthly manager. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Commissioner Geiger. Yes. Um, on the key impacts, uh, I noticed all the essential things like roads and the fire department projects are being moved. But what about parks and recs? They're not as, as essential. <coughs> Why was it something from parks and recs moved? Well, and that's it, and I guess that's a uh, that would be a good point. I guess for parks and recs, we didn't we didn't move anything. We kept everything. That's currently well, I just uh, scared you didn't move anything, but parks. I just why wouldn't you? Because those are some of the bigger projects that's eating up the funds. Um, it, I mean, project schedules. The, the, we moved and we we tried working with things that the the the, the schedules were more fluid, like resurfacing. Um, <coughs> with the projects in parks, we'd already started down the path of of the design process. We'd already paid the architects. And, when, and those projects were scheduled to be let at a certain time. So we didn't um, consider doing this until after all that was already done. That, well, know, in, the, in the... All those have been let and everything. Well, I mean, as Commissioner pointed out, we, we have been discussing this over the last several months. Um, and this was more of a... We, we, our goal when we started looking at it was to try to keep things where, they're, where they were. And not move anything out and not make any adjustments and which is what we've done we were able to do <coughs> in the parks well um, uh, a lot of the park projects have gone way over budget have you input have you inserted that factor into what you're moving around what about some other things that's gonna uh, go over budget um, but this uh, allocation for year four, $500,000 for paving, we're not going to be doing much of it. Well, that, 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 that 500000 would be the <coughs> Elming match. Elming match. So we're not going to be doing any splash paving for the year four. Correct. Except for that five million. <coughs> but we will fulfill the entire $18 million by the end of the splash. I know it, but we're putting... One of the key elements of the squad for road, <coughs> we're putting it on hold. Um, I don't like this. I, you know, uh, I, I, I wish we would have a little bit more time to look at this and take it off the, I hope we're not voting on it tomorrow. Are we? This is just a this presentation. Is this, this is, is just a presentation. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, we usually do three million a year for paving. And that's splash, right? Yes, Plus the LMIG. Plus the so we're we're just going to do the LMIG. <coughs> and we're not going to use any splash splash doll, dollars for year four, which is 2020, right? Yes. And then we're only going to do half as much the next year, and then we'll catch up with the three. Uh, this, I just don't like this at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, and, and one of the we, keep in to mind we have to put the essentials first. Right. Yeah, keep in mind too with the resurfacing program. We did have a, a, a this year, year three was our largest resurfacing program. With CW Matthews, we had a six million dollar contract. Mm -hmm. That was a combination of SPLOS and um, Elmi. So you had a fairly robust resurfacing program this year, more much more than you've had in the past the past two years. Um, so that's one. That's one reason we looked at. We we did look at resurfacing. Um, but there, there's no adjustments to parts and rec, <coughs> and those those are the big projects that are going way over budget. Uh, um, the, the key thing with parts. <coughs> the Boundary Waters uh, uh, Youth Center is over mm -hmm. a million dollars over. The the um, tennis courts there at. Mac Road, they're going to exceed. I don't. Do you have any idea how much they're going to go over? Well, and I, that, that was the point I was going to make. And it's, we did get the bids in on all three of those projects, and we're currently analyzing them. Uh, I would say they were good bids. Uh, it will it will certainly be a help to the parks program. Um, with no no further comments on them until we get through reviewing them and we can make a recommendation to the board. But, but it's we going do to be have way over budget. The, the no. court. Once we 
yes, it'll, it'll, it's possible to still be over budget, but it does look, with the current bids we have in, it certainly looks better than um, what we had. So that would be over our initial budget, but possibly under the revised budget. Yes. Well, I, I'm not very pleased with this. I, I think we've got our priorities in the wrong place. I'm sorry. Um, uh, people, when they think of splash, they're thinking about how it's going to affect the, everybody. And everybody drives the roads. Everybody um, uses the fire department. And uh, to cut a fire truck, I, has anybody conferred with the chief <coughs> as to the feasibility of moving? And not this is not coming up in my committee to fire an EMS. This was never brought up about not buying a fire truck during uh, year four. So uh, seems to me like we need to talk about that, right, chief? <laughs> but has anybody conferred with the chief what it's going to do with his overall program? Um, what about the new fire station, number nine? Uh, is it going to be delayed to year it's already six out. or seven? It's already out in the last year of the program. So it's nine. going to be uh, year six, right? Yes. So if we have the money. <laughs> sure. But I, I know our budget is under budget. I mean, well, we're not over it spending. Our allocation, the fire and EMS, is not one of the biggest uh, departments in the whole county. We're not overspending. <coughs> but uh, I'm just saying I don't like this at all. We've got our priorities in the wrong place. We're not uh, taking care of the citizens the way we promised them we'd take care of them with the slosh. And I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Any other comments before we move on? Okay, yeah. Mr. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I appreciate the, the commentary about priorities. Um, it is the majority. Nothing's locked in stone ever. We had this conversation early on where the county administrator did such a wonderful job. And I give him credit. He had to pull this whole program together in 24 hours. It is what it is. But we as a board weren't bound by it. 24 hours, this young man had to pull this whole program together, go to Wall Street, and pull it off based on categories. So anything that happened in the transportation has nothing to do with fire and EMS. The cash flows are independent. Stay on task. Don't bleed over and create a narrative that one is not related to the other. Stay on task with that cash flow by categories. Secondly, we, we get cost of materials. Right, so don't get so rigid. We know it's an ebb and flow. Things go up, we got to pull back. We promised that we would do what we said by categories. We did not project, we did not commit to project specific. <coughs> that is nowhere in whatever we said. We would make decisions along the way based on how we could do it. That's a false narrative. It's not true. It's just not true. We as a board can look and make decisions based on what's going. Now, I'm going to leave with this final comment about spending. And, I, and Terry, I do appreciate you highlighting the fact that we did do more in resurfing this year. So again, it's, it's not rigid. It just doesn't stay locked in. Don't move, don't change, don't change, don't move, nothing, don't change. It's like, come on, guys. It ebbs and flows. It ebbs and flows. It ebbs and flows. And you guys are doing a good job based on what we got to work with. Right? Nothing's rigid. You can change. And, and so I'll give you a point back in 2015. And Miguel, you should appreciate this. All right, so here we are. We're, we're, we got a little LMIG, and we blew our resurfacing budget by four million. Four million. <coughs> now, LMIG might have been no more than two million. We blew it by four million. The argument was, well, they're, they're building a Mercedes Benz. They're build, there's some things coming online and cost of materials going up. Four million. Now, you could have paused it. That leadership at that time could have paused it. They could have smoothed it out. It didn't. Our whole point is that as we get new information, you make adjustments. At some point, you're like, okay, it's raining outside. You're going down Riverside. Like, look, you better slow down. It's dark. You got to adjust. Turn left. You keep going straight. You're going to go off that cliff. 
That's the whole point of information. It flows. So the rigidity of saying we said this and then nothing changes. Don't move. Don't breathe. Like don't change anything. It's, it's not good. That's not leadership. Like if you just keep going straight, 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 and you don't make adjustments, you're going to find yourself in a very awkward place. I commend us as a board to look at decisions collectively. We're making decisions that it ebbs and flows. It's not fear making decisions. We're not bound by the past. We can always recalibrate. And that's all we're doing, like let off the gas, put on the brake, turn a little bit to the left and right, and that's all we're doing is it's a schedule. It's adjusting based on intelligence. So this, this, this narrative of that, oh my God, they're changing. No, our priorities are based on what we're looking at. I'm telling you guys, you're not gonna make that curve ease off. That was the whole point. You can't control materials. You can't control some things that we had to do. So it's one of those, we'll make an adjustment, guys. It's cool, y'all got this. But don't fear you guys are doing right. I just, I thank you again for going through this, this exercise um, so that we can make accurate decisions. I yield to Thank you. We're going to move on. Yep. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Well done. All right, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to shift a little bit. I have yep. a judge on the plane here who needs to get back, and I would like to bring you up here <coughs> so we can speak about uh, under the business item. I have number 12 resolution in support of Operation Christmas. <coughs> judge Bo McLean. And to bring the house. sheriff up. With yeah, Bo, yes, thank you. Oh, we got both of them in here? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's going to be good. I see you brought the Christmas present. We did. We very did gifts. bring we bearing gifts. But first we gotta adjust our head gear, sure. Three, two, three. I'll do it if you do it. It looks real good on you. <laughs> you know, the sheriff and I have a, a favorite saying it's no man stands so tall as when he exactly. bends down to help a child. So we don't have a problem wearing Santa hats no, no, so we and uh, <laughs> asking the Board of Commissioners to issue a resolution of support for Operation Christmas. The uh, co-chairs of Operation Christmas are Sheriff Pounds, Renee Davis with the Douglas County School System, um, Pastor Dave Devine with the Church of Chapel Hill, uh, Mark Denice with uh, Denice Signs, and with that very group of individuals we represent the church, business, and government. And that's what Operation Christmas is all about. It's about community unity. <coughs> we have participation uh, from all the churches in the community in terms of all the denominations from Baptist <coughs> to Lutheran <coughs> to Anglican to Assemblies of God to Catholic to Presbyterian to Methodist. We have the civic clubs from the Optimist Club to the Rotary Club, to the Kiwanis Club. Uh, we have some of the historic African-American female sorority groups that participate in Operation Christmas. We have the Chamber of Commerce. We have the school system. We have the police department, the sheriff's department, the fire department, and of course, county government. <coughs> and what we do each year, and this is our fifth year, mm -hmm. is we serve children in Douglas County who are on free or reduced price school meals, who are receiving services at the Douglas County Health Department, who are in the Head Start program, who are patients at Inner Harbor. In short, uh, children that are in objective need situations. Kids who've been determined to be needy by others, and we serve all of them. And we're on target this year. We may end up serving 10,000 children. Mm -hmm. We have 9,000 registered for Operation Christmas right now and two weeks left. So we wanted to come before the board, the sheriff and I, and uh, ask for your support uh, and your prayers as we move into this season. And one thing I want to say about the sheriff, well, I have several things, but I'm just going to say one. <laughs> We're going to keep some of the old stories between us. but. Uh, uh, Douglas County Sheriff's Department has received nationwide media attention because they've decided over the last couple of years that if a family couldn't get to pick up their gifts, if someone was sick, if someone had transportation issues, someone uh, had to work, uh, sheriff's deputies would round up those gifts and go to those homes. And it made an amazing 
impact in our community that the sheriff decided to do that. Uh, because lots of times when a sheriff's car rolls up at your house, it's not a happy event. <laughs> but, but when a sheriff's car rolls up at your house to bless your family and provide Christmas for your kids, it's <coughs> nothing like that. And I just want to commend you. Sure, sure. Yeah, so we're quickly, I'm going to say that before we don't my time. I'm, it is your time. When I was elected sheriff, I promised try to save our children because that's what we've been losing at a rate that won't nobody in this room believe that we've been losing that fast. My jail is full of them, young kids that got to the crossroad and didn't know which way to turn. They make the wrong turn and end up in the jail. So I get out here in this community and try my best to save these kids. This Operation Christmas is such an honor to me because it's still part of what I promised myself to do as I was elected, to save our children, you'd be surprised how many families that we help had never been helped. It wasn't about to lean back on, it wasn't about to fall back on. And the judge and I got together, we're going to try to fix that problem here in Douglas County, help folks pay attention and fix it in other places. And I know I got two more things on the agenda, but I'm tired of the news media, I got them waiting on me at the office at home, you do the mother two on there for me, and I will have appreciate it. <laughs> one more thing, Chair. One more thing. You know, um, this is kind of my idea. I hope you like it. But do we have a, a gift for each of the uh, commissioners? Um, and it's a memento of Operation Christmas 2019. And I signed it, the Sheriff signed it. But I got to thinking about this when I was at the Constitutional Officers meeting. And the sheriff's uh, folks came and asked for some uh, new patrol cars. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I'd bring y'all some sheriff's cars. <laughs> just to remind you that the sheriff would like some new cars for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been good. So y'all don't be naughty. Y'all yeah, help the sheriff out. Well done. And we got one for each of you. Thank you. And... Uh, this is for uh, Vice Chair Robinson. You see it's a nice sheriff's car. Commissioner Mitchell, you can't drive that. You <laughs> sure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and this is yours. Now, Ann, you got one. All right, all right. They're personalized. I'm going to get one. <laughs> you can get one. How are they There's Commissioner Mitchell. Is there anything about that? Isn't that neat? Yes. Merry Christmas, thank you. Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love y'all. We appreciate We appreciate you. you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, uh -huh. Thank you. Skipping around so we can expedite this meeting. Approval of the minutes tomorrow. Board of Commissioners be prepared to approve the We have two proclamations, tab five and six, which is proclaiming November 22nd, 28 uh, through 28, 2019, as the Farm City Week in Douglas County, and that will be rendered by Mr. Joy Rainwater. And tab number six is proclaiming and observing International Care and Kindness Week in Douglas County, and that will be rendered by Patricia Watley. All right, we'll uh, pivot back to our presentations, and we have a Chapel Hill uh, I-20 Diversion Diamond Interchange Project and a scoping study update by uh, Director Valentin. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, I'm going to uh, skip over some of the slides in the interest of time. But uh, this is just an update on where we are on this project. Uh, the Chapel Hill DDI project essentially <coughs> is an analysis of the traffic situation at I-20 and Chapel Hill, including Douglas Boulevard and including a section of Campbellton all the way up to Hospital Drive. So one of the first things that uh, the consultant uh, has done is analyze the, what we refer to in traffic uh, analysis as a level of service. 
and it is represented by a letter grade, and, and you, can, you can look at it as a, as a grade that you would get in, in school. A is good, and uh, D is not quite so good, and there's E's and F's, which uh, depending on the school district that you attended, you may get either a D or uh, an E or an F. Essentially, what we have found <coughs> is that the traffic is uh, the, the the main problem with the traffic is at Douglas Boulevard and Chapel Hill, followed by the eastbound ramp uh, from I-20 traveling southbound uh, on Chapel Hill. The north side of uh, the equation here, Hospital Drive, right, is actually in fairly good shape under existing conditions. Now, to give you a sense of relativity, the letter grade corresponds to a delay per vehicle at that location, at that intersection, or in the case of a freeway, um, you can look at the slides to the right. This is a very old slide out of uh, Virginia DOT, but it gives you a sense of where um, uh, you know, what, what level of congestion is represented by, by the letter. So uh, level of service, A, is the upper uh, location here. Very little traffic. As you go down, this would be the B, the C, and then D, E, and F. By the time you get to F, that is a failed mode. That means things broke down, the equations don't even work anymore. It's difficult to make projections, and this is where road rage begins to creep up. Uh, so <clears throat> you want to try and avoid that. One of the things that we analyze in addition to traffic volumes is the accident history. And <coughs> the intersection of Douglas Boulevard and Timber Ridge and Chapel Hill <coughs> over the last five years has had 390 accidents. And uh, as you look, the up uh, towards the north, the intersection of Campbellton and uh, Hospital Drive, only 39, none in between there and the um, west <coughs> and north ramp uh, of Chapel Hill uh, going northbound. So this is uh, part of the equation looking at not only how are vehicles getting through the area, through the intersections, but what kind of uh, safety uh, record do we have. So one of the things that we look at is the origin destinations uh, analysis. And what that will do is we look at where the vehicles are entering the, the viaduct or the, or the roadway uh, that we're analyzing and where they're headed. Uh, looking at um, the upper uh, slide, when they're coming north, uh, um, actually westbound, going to Chapel Hill southbound, 58% of our 58% of the traffic is going right through the intersection. 7% are turning left. 35% are turning to the right towards the mall. Now the ones that are going eastbound off, uh, off of I-20 are going. Six uh, two thirds of them are going clear through the intersection. 13%, however, are turning left. 21 are turning right. So we we found that the issue. Uh, and the reason why the level of service has deteriorated on the south side is you have two conflicting movements, two, two uh, feeders into Chapel Hill, and there is a the section between the eastbound ramp and the turn here at Timber Ridge is um, there's not a lot of space, and so there's weaving that goes on. Mm -hmm. These folks are trying to cut over to the other side, mm -hmm. and there's enough volume going through that they can't do it, not easily. And so it becomes a, traffic, uh, a safety consideration. So the, the situation is partly volume, but partly the configuration of what we have there. <coughs> so we looked at three different alternatives, actually more than that, several different iterations, but one of the first ones that we looked at was the DDI. The reason we looked at that is because, well, that is a solution that is implemented typically at an interchange when there are a lot of left-turning uh, movements. In this particular case, 
it turns out that that was not necessarily the best solution for that location. We also looked at a spooey or a single point urban interchange and I'll have some slides uh, of that and we looked at operational improvements. What if we didn't do any of those things that are much more expensive and we concentrate on doing <coughs> localized improvements. So a DDI, <clears throat> if you can see the slide, this is not, obviously not that location, this is what it would look like. You, you take the traffic and you flip it so that the left turning movement has an easier time over the interchange and accessing uh, the interstate. So we looked at that, analyzed the level of service that it would yield, and those uh, configurations are beneficial. They are uh, generally resolve the issue with the left turning movements. However, you would have to rebuild the bridge and, it, or at least add to the bridge because there's not enough lanes, and flip the traffic so, that, so you would have to sort of chase the improvements in both directions in addition to doing that. We also look at the SPUI. Uh, one example of that is uh, at 400 and Lenox Road. And you can see from the slide, if you can see it from there, um, it is a lot of concrete bridge. And it does resolve the left turning movements. However, it is very expensive to implement. Now, when we do these analyses, we initially look at what is the problem. Next, we look at what are possible <coughs> alternatives. We do not exclude necessarily very expensive alternatives right off the bat. We look at could this solve the issue? Could this improve the situation? Then, after we establish how well it would handle that, we look at how much does it cost and is there a better alternative? So we also looked at operational improvements, adding uh, lanes to remove the weaving that goes on. And this is what it would look like. This is what has been uh, analyzed to be the most cost-effective solution. Now, this uh, would, would entail adding a, a turn lane, uh, I'm sorry, adding an additional through lane southbound on Chapel Hill at Douglas Boulevard. You, if, if you're familiar with that uh, intersection, well, actually, everybody's familiar with that intersection. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have two lanes that turn right onto Douglas Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Well, this concept would take one of those lanes <coughs> and push it through the intersection. So you could either turn right, as you do now, or go through. And by doing that, you eliminate a lot of the, the traffic that has to fight the southbound traffic to get over to the intersection because they can now stay in the proper lane. So this would entail adding another lane. The bridge, however, would not have to be reconstructed, would not have to be widened. And so the intersection, and, and I'll, I'll flip over to this side, the intersection of Hospital Drive and, uh, and Campbellton is going to stay pretty much the way it is with one exception. We would look to have a third left turn lane. The reason for that is there is traffic here that gets trapped. They're headed for westbound for the off ramp at, at I-20 westbound, but they get in the wrong lane. And so they're, they're weaving, they're fighting each other in this stretch of road here. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to eliminate that and sign this properly so if, so if you're headed for I-20 westbound, you stay on the outer lane or the, the right lane, right mostly. <coughs> so no other changes to this intersection. The island, uh, Freedom Island stays as it is. Does, it's not affected at all. Uh, but we would move the road over a little bit to accommodate another left turn lane here. Moving down, um, this would be striped for three lanes, one to turn right uh, at this um, subdivision here, and then proceed on to turn right onto westbound I-20. The, the ramp from I-20 that goes, it's, it's really westbound off-ramp to northbound Campbellton, 
we would reconfigure a little bit so that they would have a better visibility and ability to make this turn. The church would not be impacted very much. The driveways and all would stay as they are, as, as would much of this area. The one main difference that we, we thought would be very helpful if we could implement is what we refer to as a slip ramp under, under the bridge, under uh, uh, Chapel Hill, the north, the westbound <coughs> ramp to southbound Chapel Hill, so you go under the bridge and then you loop around. Mm -hmm. That, that uh, radius is pretty tight, and as you're, as you're going around, it, it takes you, um, you know, quite a while, it's almost like you're feeling the centrifugal force as you're <laughs> looping around. Well, it would be straightened out towards the end a little bit, and it would be brought up here, probably another 100, 150 feet north of where it is now, and it would be signalized. So this traffic, and this is what, what the main issue that we found, <coughs> because this traffic now is able to slip through without stopping, is not allowing that traffic there to make that turn. So by moving it up and stopping them there with a signal, then when it's their turn to go, they would have a free turn to make. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the improvement there. Uh, because we are uh, signalizing this in slightly differently, we would have to add additional stacking lanes uh, for the uh, eastbound off-ramp. Mm -hmm. um, and here, there are some changes uh, in addition to the through lane that I mentioned. This lane will drop off uh, beyond here at the next intersection, the next signal. Uh, I think that might be the mall entrance, but I forget the, the name of uh, the street itself. But in, in any event, this would push that lane, that third lane, all the way through. That way, you allow traffic to make it through this intersection without having to fight other traffic on that week. So that would be the operational improvements, essentially. If we, um, this would be the, the, the situation in 2044, and when we do traffic analysis, we project at least 20 years from the time we, we think we would implement the project. So if this project were to move forward, we would be looking at a 2024 construction. Uh, and then we look at what would happen in 2044, because as you know, it takes a while to get these transportation projects online, so we have to anticipate as much as we can, and so this is a 20-year projection. Uh, so the, at, at 2024, the design year conditions, this intersection, if nothing is done, would essentially fail. Douglas Boulevard at Chapel Hill would fail both in the morning peak and the, in the afternoon peak. Um, the intersection, uh, eastbound, uh, uh, eastbound off the ramp from I-20 would fail in the morning uh, peak. Mm -hmm. And so the preferred alternative, if those things are implemented, the, the main intersection that is affected <coughs> would operate at a, at a level of service D, which is which is actually acceptable. It's not great, but it's much better than a failed intersection that, that mm -hmm. would happen. This intersection here operates in the in the AM peak at, uh, at the same level of service D, in the PM peak at B because there's not as many people accessing uh, the the off ramp or the on ramp, I should say. The one that <coughs> you can see the greatest difference is the left turn onto westbound I-20. That one actually deteriorates. And the reason for that is that is now a, a left turn where you don't, you, you have to just find a gap, there's no signal. And it would have to be signalized to help the traffic down beyond there. So, but overall, this is what we anticipate the, the uh, operational uh, condition would be 20, 25 years from now with this configuration of the project. Now, we do not 
we do not have, <coughs> this project is now in the scoping phase. Scoping phase is essentially looking at what is the best solution for the problem that has been identified. And when, when the potential solution is not obvious or where it's really complicated, then you, you, before you <coughs> get into the design of the fix, you look at different alternatives to see what the best fix is. So the analysis essentially said, you know, you started out looking at a DDI as the solution. A DDI is not, not going to be the best solution. We looked at even something that generally would help even more, the SPUI, and that is not uh, a cost-effective solution. We found that by doing certain operational improvements at different locations, we can actually achieve the goal of preventing that intersection from failing. Again, at this point, this is just for information purposes. We are in the scoping phase. Next, we're going to essentially meet with the stakeholders, which are the business owners along that strip that are going to be impacted. We've met with them before, and we're going to present these um, solutions and have a discussion. And then we will arrive at a, at a concept report that will go to GDOT for their approval. And if approved, it essentially would codify these solutions for the long term. Now, the project, the way it is configured now, would stop there. We, we would have completed the analysis. We would have found the most cost-effective solution but there is no uh, design that would follow unless we make the decision to fund the next phase of the project. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Okay. So Director Valentin, basically what the study did was show us the most effective, cost effective solution that we could implement and what time frame. Given that, let's let's just say we did have, we went to the next design phase and we went to the implementation phase. Um, if, if, all the, if all fell in place and the funding was identified to move the project, by 2024, this project could go to construction in some configuration because you don't necessarily have to do all of the improvements at once, but there are improvements that complement each other and you have to you have to do them at the same time. Uh, but, but to your point, if we uh, move forward and there was consensus among the stakeholders and the board and the city, uh, I will be bringing this information to the city uh, next week or the week after. And so uh, essentially, once we build consensus and the concept is approved by VDOT, it would be in it would be on the county to move the process forward. The next phase would be the actual design of the improvements, and that is unfunded. This particular scoping study does have federal funds, so this project is positioned to potentially elicit additional federal funds when we're ready. But obviously, the county would have to uh, do a local match and. It, it would be, if the funding was in place, then the earliest possible implementation date would be 2024. I ask that because the traffic on Chapel Hill and Douglas Hill are not getting any better. People are constantly moving here. We're constantly trying to draw additional people here. So we know if we don't do anything, we eventually will get to that D or that F. So. So this study took into account the projected increase of volume? Yes. And it took it all the way up to 2044. 2044. <coughs> so even if we implemented it to 2024, that would buy us an additional 20 years of less congestion. If, essentially, if you, if you were able to build all of the improvements by 2024, mm -hmm. you would have at least 20 years of operation where the intersections are not failing. Certainly there'd be additional traffic, but it would be uh, operation that 
that can be tolerated by cutting down those wait times at those. Oh, days. absolutely. Okay. <coughs> I yield. Thank you. Okay. Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah. I mean, all right. Um, you know, to this point, and, and again, I, I, I get it. I, I drive, take a lot of taxis and Ubers and stuff. So I'm always <coughs> talking to the people that are on the street, right, real time. And no matter where they are, they talk about that Chapel Hill, they talk about Highway 5. <coughs> It's, it's brutal. And, it's, and it, it's from the heart. They're not political. They're just saying, well, you can do anything, Commissioner. We appreciate it. Can you fix those areas? And so to the point of, um, and you got to think about it, Douglas County was a, you know, as you reflect on the 150s, it was a small town. It was, it was just, you know, a little across the river. We're not like Atlanta. We got our little corner and stuff. Rural. <coughs> but in the past 30, 40 years, a lot of people moving over here. And it was no anticipation, no forward thinking to like, what do we do until it's too late? <coughs> it's already here. It's already weighting us down. And it's like, oh boy. Now go back to long-term capital planning. Like, okay, guys, I know I'm going to take a call, right? He didn't say it. I'm, I, I've been waiting for it. Like, okay, now add that to the list. <coughs> I mean, I get where, where you, you, you're... Miguel's doing a good job. We talked about this in our transportation committee, and, and, and I appreciate his approach to how to introduce things. You know, okay, we'll go through the scoping and we'll do the design. No, how much do they go cost? 30 million? 20 million? In addition to the other areas that need to have true infrastructure? You can't get there on property taxes. But then you still have this bad experience amongst the citizens that are just every day. Yes, my roads are smooth, but it's so many people. And so part of our, we, we have to sort of ex widen, <clears throat> right? It's not just smoothing, it's also widening because you, it's a bandwidth, it's a capacity issue. And so that's, again, so I'm going back to, we need to properly plan, set expectations. There's enough people here to spread off the cost. There's enough people here. Right? Because you got the same infrastructure that was built originally. All these people moved in here, but you're maintaining the old. Without all this new money that came in here, it's maintaining the old. <coughs> Let it be spread. I mean, they can carry their own burden. So, again, fiscal policy. You, 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 you can't just maintain the old and just leave it like, well, that's going to cost too much. Like, okay, when are you going to do it? Drain all the money out and then never focus on the future and just kick the can down the curve? I can't, I can't sit there and not have that conversation. Got to do better. Have to do better. Else you're going to keep experiencing the same thing that you're experiencing. It's like, guys, you're not going to get out this. You're going to have to pay for this. There's a fundamental cost of government. And again, we have to say it. You know, I, I told him I would carry the burden. You, you, you got, this is going to cost. It's necessary, but it's going to cost. And it's going to cost beyond the property taxes, the, the, the residential property taxes. You can't, you can't raise taxes there to get out of this. This is a bigger picture. A bigger funding mechanism. We need to leverage our dollars up to the feds um, and whatever mechanism we need to get this done. Tell the truth. Set their expectations so we can get done what we need to do. I okay, we're going to move. I just wanted to say uh, your timeline just seems very naive. <laughs> you know, um, and I don't know how much involvement you've had with the roundabout out at Dorset. I mean, uh, Dorset Shows Road, mm -hmm. Banks Mill Road. <coughs> that project is a state project, and um, I've never heard the county even mention it in, the, in their committee about the roundabout. And we had the state people out when Tom Wortham was the chair. Mm -hmm. That's how long it's been on the table. Mm -hmm. And they've got a plan, but uh, they're supposed to be doing right away pretty soon, but that's been going with the public meetings were what, three or four years ago. It's for uh, you. Mm -hmm. You became chairman. So, you know, do you pressure them to finish the projects that's already <laughs> on the table <laughs> before we start another one? Um, I have never heard anybody in, at the county level even mention that roundabout. Other. Okay for about three or four years. We have one citizen. She's uh, 97 years old, Anna Cobb. Mm -hmm. She stays on the back of, um, of DOT constantly 
what is the update? What is it? And they keep pushing everything back. They keep pushing things back. I wish you would get on uh, with the DOT and start pushing the project. I talked to uh, um, Representative Gravely this past week, and he and uh, <coughs> Senator Dugan are going to get on board with it because it's ridiculous. There's five points of traffic that comes in right there. There's wrecks constantly. It's a very dangerous intersection because you're coming out from all directions. There's a church there that lets out on Sunday. <laughs> and, and it, you know, why can't we push the, the projects that's already on the table? Also, while we look, I, I certainly know that we need uh, something done at Chapel Hill, and we did have a diamond uh, merge project already Killed approved, approved Killed by the state, mm -hmm. and the city killed it. Sure and uh, so that could have been done years ago. So we, we need to coordinate a lot more and better with the, the city on these projects before they get to a certain point. And then we find out that we're not on the same page, so the DOT throws it out the door. So we, we just really need to, um, I urge you to push projects, especially that uh, roundabout on Highway 5 that's been out there. Uh, I'd like for Bobby to just get the statistics about how many wrecks and whatever is done out there on Highway 5 sometime. And um, then, um, you know, push them for, on that project. They've already approved the project, but they keep, when they answer Anna Cobb's emails, she, they always say, if funds are available. What in the heck is all that about? Why, why we wasted all these years trying to get it done, and they say, if funds are available. Could you check on that information? I, I certainly can, and, and to your question, Commissioner, I do have discussions with the DOT about all of the projects. It's a lot easier when we have funding in the project to have a discussion with them about the timeline and everything like that. Uh, it's a little trickier when they're footing the bill and they're, they're doing the design, but I've, I've had discussions with them about where they are with the design and, and I will continue to do that. Well, I've, I've even gotten a copy of the design put and sent it to um, uh, it's on my website, my personal website. But uh, just please keep pushing those projects while we go along with the <coughs> other projects too. Um, please. Um, thank you. I'm going to yield back. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Gatto. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. I'll be brief because I know this is just ongoing. But the diamond that she spoke of, in years past that <coughs> somehow went left. It's probably good that we didn't do it based on what your, 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 your showing and your statistics show that that was probably a, a, a bad idea even though it was derailed by the city. If, and, and again, it happened um, a while back, so I'm not familiar with what level of analysis they went into, okay. but I suspect that if they had done uh, as in-depth an analysis as, as we have done this time around, they would have found, they would have come to the same conclusion that that probably was not the best solution. Yeah, and, and speaking of which though, since 80% of this is within the city, what kind of discussions are you having with uh, the mayor and council and mm -hmm. Michelle and those guys so we won't get to the same juncture again mm -hmm. if we get to this juncture? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> we won't have the same uh, problem that we thought was, you know, a done deal, but it ended up being derailed for whatever reasons, and I don't want to get into all that, though. So what kind of discussions, first up, are we, there? We do, have, okay. we do have a uh, stakeholders committee that rep uh, where there's representatives from the businesses along the corridor and the city. And so the city has, the city uh, meets with us on a regular basis to discuss the progress. Mm -hmm and they are a member of the stakeholders committee the the city has also asked me to come before them and give them an update which i'm going to be doing the next uh I believe it's ne next week next thursday um to to give them the same information good uh, so so yeah they're 
they're being kept in rules. And, and you understand the, the, the rationale as to sure. why, because I think, I mean, doing nothing is not an option. It's what we do, and most efficient is what we do is, is important. Um, and at that time, the, the city had no, other than it was in the city, no cost to them whatsoever. It was all gonna be done by the county. Um, my other question, so, it sounds to me, <coughs> this puts me in mind of early 2000, when the mayor and I went to Washington and talked with the Federal Highway Commission, along with us and a few other uh, colleagues then, to get the highway done to bypass. Now that was, you know, roughly 18 years or so ago. <laughs> that project was an A when we went there and got the funds. That project today is probably now a C or a D. So should I anticipate the same thing here if we decide to take your third phase of doing this, um, or option rather, and doing this, that by the time of 2044, mm -hmm. We'll be somewhere, I believe, more, or um, we'll still we'll be back to a, 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 a D, C, or a, a, D, a D or an F. Correct in my thought process, or not? Because you, I, don't you think, are, I think people are still moving to Douglas County. I don't think they're, they're going elsewhere. Absolutely, uh, okay. Commissioner. We we the, the analysis is based on existing conditions and the best projections that we can make as to what traffic is going to do in the future 20, 24 years actually. And uh, so it is a uh, our best educated guess. Mm -hmm. But if things are, <clears throat> if there's additional volume, people more people moving to the area, or if something else gets built and the traffic patterns change, yeah. sometimes it's not just the volume. It's right. where are they headed? Uh, like, like we saw in some sense. of these intersections. Yep. Yep. Uh, what what this analysis showed was that if you do nothing. By the year 2044, you have one, two major intersections that will fail, <coughs> keeping access to I-20 uh, at a, at a uh, condition that you do not want. Uh, if you implement these uh, improvements that have been identified, they will operate at level of service D, which is actually an acceptable level of service. So 2044 to operate at D. At D. Okay. okay. So it, right. it will okay. go okay. from D okay. to yeah. E to F. Uh -huh. So you're actually you're seeing more traffic, and we're projecting more traffic. Uh, but the but the operation of the intersections are still going to be acceptable in 2044. Understood. Understood. Now, are we also um, keeping in mind that? Is the goal is to make room for traffic, or the goal is to get cars off from uh, air traffic, from uh, air quality control, or what, what is the goal here? Because, I, I, and I'm alluding to the, the busing system that we have invested in, um, is that also tying into this whole makeup as to what, are, what is the ultimate goal? Is the, is the goal is to just make room for more traffic? Or the goal is to try to get cars off the road. And, and I thought at one time there was an initiative, you know, from our governor and others all the way down, talking about trying to remove cars from the interstates to create bus lanes and, and other means of uh, moving to get people more mobile mobility. Mm -hmm. So what's the goal? Okay, the, I'll answer your question okay. in two parts. The, the uh, operational improvements that we've identified <coughs> aim to accommodate the traffic that we see coming, okay. that we anticipate will be there, mm -hmm. to, to accommodate it the best that we can with these improvements through that corridor. The second part of your question is, what can be done by way of transit to help this situation? And anything that we can do will extend the life of this corridor even further. So if, if we're able to have um, additional uh, lanes on I-20, which GDOT has anticipated, That's exactly has projected, right. yes. um, then this intersection, this interchange would be better positioned mm -hmm. to handle those additional lanes from I-20 because part of the problem is 
you can add capacity to I-20, but if they can't get off the road to where they want to go, mm -hmm. then it's going to back up onto I-20. So right, you that's defeat why. the purpose. Right, and that's this why. will improve the capacity mm -hmm. for them to get through that area. So, and so it will it will solve that part of the equation. The, the transit component very uh, obviously would be beneficial and it would be in addition to these improvements. Any traffic that you can take off, uh, any no, any cars that you can remove from the flow, mm -hmm. allow the intersection to operate better mm -hmm. or at the same level longer. So I'm hoping that through all your, your, your data collection that you also plug in that information to understand that, okay, if there was a removal of cars, if that's one of the goals, then that would also help in this whole D grade, go to hopefully a B grade, before it gets to the F grade by 2044. Mm -hmm. If you understand my math. Sure. Okay, okay. Um, and you spoke of phases, and I know you don't know the answer to probably this, but it sounds like, again, I'll go back to the Power 92 Bible, <coughs> it went from one phase to three phase to four, I, you know, now we're at the end of whatever the phase, the last phase it is. Is that kind of sort of what I'm anticipating that you're looking at trying to pull off here, or? In a way, but it, it, it's not going to be, it's a much more compact project. Yes. So it's not going to be the same number of phases. Uh, Route 92 has four. Mm -hmm. uh, we would not be looking at four. More like two. Uh, and, and it goes through the issue of the solution to the traffic problem from the bridge south is different from the bridge north. And therefore, some of the improvements that are programmed for the north side could be done in phase two versus phase one. And, 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 I, and I just want, just for the general public, so that we're gonna hear it and understand exactly what the true goal here is. Uh, so we can acknowledge that more so than the mere fact of talking about just laying concrete and putting, you know, widening roads or, or not. It's yeah, yeah, more, I mean, all that. So all that plays into what the true ultimate goal here is. And that is to accommodate the, the ongoing traffic or that what's forthcoming or to really try to get cars off the road to improve our air quality in other phases. And if that's the case, then maybe we, we should look at also, what about, you know, a bus lane? Or so, so that we can kind of be able to pick up and get those to and from within Douglas County. I don't know, but just food for thought. Well, okay. you, you got a very valid point. Let me make this you know, okay. additional point that because we, we, with the improvements, we remove traffic through the intersection or several intersections quicker, then the emissions are reduced. So any improvement in the traffic Correct. flow has a, a correlated improvement in the in the emissions. I understood. I appreciate that. Uh, I did have some. <laughs> that, that, that's the bigger question. I don't even want to get into how much that this will possibly cost, but I'll I'll, I'll pause at that that <clears throat> juncture. But uh, I'll yield back. So thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Director Valentine. I'm just gonna. Um, in the interest of time, skip around just a little bit, y'all, to expedite. I, I chose uh, what I was doing just as y'all were speaking, just trying to identify some items that are pretty just uh, self-explanatory that allow this meeting to move quickly. I'm going to move to business item number 13, authorization to accept vic uh, victims <coughs> of crime at Boca. Continuation granted the amount of $359,937, which includes additional training funds in the amount of $4,960 with a match of $992 from the Prosecuting Attorney's Council PAC and Georgia Crime Justice Coordinating Council CJG and the CJCC and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents uh, and amend the budget if necessary. Mrs. Thompson, I am so sorry. That was a long time. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, we are here asking the commission to submit our continuation grant application for 2019 and 2020 and have the commission chair to sign all related documents. Okay. Trust you have board. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you so you much. much. We're going to move on to the tab number 14, authorization to approve an amendment to the software agreement with Image Trend to include um, no two software facts and capability and authorized to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Uh, Chief Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, several meetings ago, the board approved the no two software that are aimed facts. Uh, documents to the hospital. Uh, it went through the legal process uh, and it was 
of the legal opinion that we would see better if we could just put it all in one contract. So that's what we're doing. We're just adding the no two <coughs> to our image stream contract. Okay. Any Madam Chair, this also had technology review, and we will, by virtue of this, be canceling the previous, rescinding our previous approval of the no two deal. Okay. And then just. Yeah, we're going to add that language. I'll get with Lisa during the transition. Okay, sounds good. Thank, Thank you, Chief. All right, we're going to move <coughs> on to tab number 15, authorization to renew an agreement between JBI Justice Benefit and Corporation and Douglas County Sheriff's Office for 2019 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Major Holmes. This, uh, this firm audits the numbers and statistics from the jail to determine how much federal <coughs> grant money is awarded annually for the SCAP grant. The SCAP grant is uh, the money that we use for, that's used for in corrections for training and equipment. Okay. Any questions from the board? This is, sounds like annual. It's annual. This is just yeah. a renewal again. Okay. We'll move on. Thank you so much, John. Major Holmes, tab number 16, that's you again. Authorization for Douglas County Sheriff's Office to renew contract with Control Concepts for 2019 through 2020 in the amount of $18,720. And authorize the chairman to sign and uh, all documents pending final legal review. Uh, Major Holmes again. Uh, this is the HVAC <laughs> equipment uh, agreement that we do annually. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a renewal and the price is the same as it was for the previous year. Okay. Any questions from the board? <coughs> that was pretty self-explanatory. Tab number 17, authorization to approve the 2020 schedule for work sessions, commission meetings, planning, and zoning board meetings and variance hearings. Uh, Clerk Watson. Yes, ma'am. These are um, based on what we had this year as well. There's a couple that um, we had to adjust due to holidays. Okay. Any <coughs> questions from the board regarding the new schedule? All right. Thank you so much, uh, Clerk Watson. We'll move on to tab number 18, authorization to accept fiscal year uh, 2019 through 2020 Atlanta Regional, Regional Commission grant in the amount of $97,184, which requires a local match of $69,296 for the Connect Douglas Voucher <coughs> Program for Senior Adults and Individuals with Disabilities and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget as necessary. Board of Commissioners, this is something you've all been asking to make sure, you know, we've been wondering about that voucher program, and I will yield to our director, Watson, to allow him to expand. Sure. This, uh, the Atlanta Region Commission has awarded us 12 additional months funding for our voucher program. Uh, this particular period runs from July 1st of this year through June 30th of next year. All of this money is already in in the 2019 budget has been requested in the 2020 budget, so no budget amendment budget or, or changes would be, be required. Uh, this, we're getting about $10,000 additional federal money this year than what we got uh, in the previous year. This will allow us to add about 20 people to our voucher program. We currently have 130 uh, clients in the program, so this would uh, be, enable us to kick it up to 150 people. Right. Okay, any questions from the board? Come here. Okay, we'll move on to the next okay. item. Thank you so much. Uh, tab number 19, uh, authorization to amend the GEP Corps to find a uh, benefit plan agreement for Douglas County uh -huh. employees to prevent, I mean, to permit, not prevent, or permit <laughs> re employment <laughs> of retired. Participants and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Perry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Chair, Board Commissioners, yeah. this is just a minor change to our adoption agreement with uh, with GEPCOR that will allow us to uh, to rehire um, some of our retirees that, uh, that would like to come back to work for us, and uh, it will give them the option of either continuing to receive their uh, uh, their annuity benefits, their monthly annuity benefit and not re-enter into the plan or stop their annuity benefit and uh, you know re-enter into the plan so to speak so that will give us some flexibility specifically in the uh, public safety <coughs> area and uh, yeah so that's something that we talked about on the pension committee level and um, uh, everyone was in agreement with this and uh, we just want to move it forward okay Boy, that was sort of the question i had i'll pose doing uh, i'm the chairman of uh, pension uh, the plan. And it, it was just a simple question I've seen um, um, in other industries where employees are able to come back with no benefits and things of that sort because they already be in their retirement plan. 
And it sounds like as if just our organization just had not checked the box. It was an option, we just didn't check the box, and we want to check the box. So that would allow those employees who leave and retire, because again, shortages in public safety is important, and they can come back. They won't come back as a colonel or whatever they were before they left, but however, they will be able to help fill some of the gaps when we uh, have a, some short, a staffing shortages. Com uh, Commissioner Guida, I see your hand. Uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, it's not going to affect the fire department as well as we thought it would uh, because of their state retirement. Um, so uh, I don't know if uh, we're, we're still working on that, right, Mark? Right. <laughs> we had hoped that we would be able to fill some of our vacancies, but you know, the sheriff's department, you know, 28 vacancies. Uh, uh, <laughs> so this would certainly help y'all, especially with the, the sunset thing coming up into 2021. So uh, this is a good move. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Director Perry. We'll move on to tab number 20, authorization to award the bid for ballistic security panel installation solicitation 19-018 um, to Barnsley Construction Group for a total cost of $53,522 is recommended by the Purchasing Oversight Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Don Evers. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. On September the 24th, we had a bid opening <coughs> held for professional contractors who can install ballistic security panels at the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. In response to our invitation to bid, we received one responsive bid. Um, based on this one bid and the recommendation of the Purchasing Oversight Committee, it is recommended that we award the bid to Barnsley Construction Group. Any <coughs> questions from the board? All right. Uh, Commissioner. Robinson. Yeah, I mean, th this is um, this is important. I mean, I, at first, I would think it's going to be for the commissioners here. We, we've been <laughs> asking for that for, for many years I mean, in, in, our, in our citizens' hall. But this is for the sheriff's office, and we've had situations where we've had um, meltdowns in the sheriff's lobby, um, and it, it's real stuff, mm -hmm. right? It's just not violence. We have this mental health. And uh, we have employees that are vulnerable right there in that front mm -hmm. lobby. Uh, and so I think this is an appropriate use. Um, I support this. This is something that I don't want to fall uh, on deaf ears, that everyone should have some degree of a reasonable protection in delivery of their, their job. So I support this. Okay. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Guida? Just for clarification, Mark, is this for the fire department? Are these the ballistic? No. 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 We already no. have those taken care of. Okay. No, this is for the remodel of the room. Right. Well, I understand it's record room. Record room. Upstairs mm -hmm. on the second floor is what I understand. Okay. I couldn't remember. I know it was in the budget, mm -hmm. but it was. Okay, that's how realistic I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I'll be best. <laughs> when you go upstairs to our record room, it's all glass and sheet right there. Right. And with the situation, like you said, Commissioner, of the right. history that we've had in our front lobby, right. um, we have gone up there and, and to get these installed up there in the record room also. Okay. That's okay. the. The lot that the public can access the lobby and they can access second floor records without an escort. Right. And so. Okay. Thank you. So much, Commissioner. Thanks. And Chief, just for clarification, we're already down the path with our ballistic vest, right? I mean, yes. Okay. Good. All right. We're going to move on to tab number 21 authorization to advertise for a public hearing to consider an amendment to Article 2 purchasing to add section. Section twice, I'm sorry, 9 34. That's okay. Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program of the Douglas County Code of Ordinances. Uh, Don Evers. Yes. Um, currently, we do not have a disadvantaged business enterprise program, but with the recommendation of our Purchasing Oversight Committee and also the legal department reviewed this, we'd like to add a disadvantaged business enterprise program. And in, in this particular program, it will read, it is the intent of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners to enforce a local policy for DBE participation of 15% for all awards valued at $250,000.01 or greater on the following, all construction projects, capital projects, DOT projects, property maintenance contracts, and all other bids for the director of purchasing deemed same applicable. For awards valued $50,000 up to $250,000. Vendors are required to use best efforts to meet the 15% DBE goal. Formal tracking forms will be provided to the vendors for reporting purposes. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners desires to ensure non-discrimination in the ward and administration of purchases and contracts 
and the county's purchasing programs to create an environment in which disadvantaged business enterprise can compete fairly for purchases and contracts to ensure that the county's DBE program is narrowly tailored in accordance with applicable law to ensure that only firms that fully meet the eligibility standards are permitted to, to participate as DBEs to help remove barriers to the participation of DBEs in purchases and contracts and to promote the use of DBEs in all types of contracts and procurement activities. The local policy for DBEs shall not apply for restricted by federal or state law. <coughs> Any questions from the board, uh, Commissioner Carter? <coughs> uh, <coughs> explain disadvantage. Disadvantaged business enterprise, um, we're using that to incorporate the minor small business enterprise, minority business enterprise, the veterans owned businesses as well, and all those would be included in as far as the disadvantaged business. So do we have a some kind of a interpretation as to who qualifies under that? Did you say minority? Because I thought we already had that in place. Uh, as far as in place, as far as the, all of the DOT projects um, currently, and all of the DOT projects, they have the DBE um, standards that are authorized there. And with our legal team, our legal team, if, if you look in the section that was provided to you on the top part of it, they included the Disadvantaged Enterprise Business, Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program ensures that contracts are made available to small business owned and controlled by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. And, and I can help, Don. Uh, <coughs> the specific ordinance that y'all are adopting here refers to the federal law to define what a disadvantaged business enterprise is. And Don hit them all. Besides minority owned, veteran, they have to meet certain so, uh, social economics as well. And to qualify under this proposal, they would have to have either gotten a federal certificate or a state certificate or have done business with the government in the state of Georgia where they qualify and sign an affidavit confirming they still meet the requirements under the federal definition. So we're not imposing a new definition. We're adopting the federal standard that was, uh, that was adopted for purpose of construction projects. Okay, and you're back. Okay, that sounds pretty simple. <coughs> yes. Okay, we're gonna move on to tab number 20. Sure. Oh, you said yes, yes, I thought you agreed with me. Yeah, I, yeah this, again, this, this, this is an important one from a historical perspective. Um, when we talk about conjuring the war, it's about inclusion. Um, without get, spending you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars on a disparity study, um, it, it's not hard to, to look at how the contracts are awarded here. Uh, and so there are qualified individuals that believe that they're not getting a fair opportunity. They just want opportunity. And this is one of those where I hear sometimes staff, well, we don't like to be told, like, no, you, this ensures that, no, you shall honor this. No dollars will go forth above that amount where 15% must be considered. There was some desire to maybe keep this down at the policy level. That's why we had to reset this, like, no, y'all are not listening. An ordinance is broader. It's not buried. It's not sort of some symbolic, we already got that. No, <coughs> we never enforced it. Just put some real teeth into it, right? It's gonna shift, right? Let's just acknowledge that. And so for that, I mean, this is work that I have to give our, our, our new commissioner, attorney Carthen and Don um, Evers, um, the, the time that they put into this and that purchase oversight. It's one of those I just got to sit back and watch. And it's like, okay, about time, about time. Right, they put the effort into this, really thoughtfully think this through. Looked at all the metro counties, just really did some really good homework to get their minds around it. Did state and federal type of like, okay, look at all this. And it took time, it took what it took. It took the time to get it to this place, but it, it's necessary, right? So it, it can't be the illusion of inclusion. This ordinance will ensure that um, it will be done on major contracts um, going forth. So I just wanna, I don't want this to sort of just be dismissed or marginalized as is important. No, this is probably one of the major <coughs> legislative efforts we've done this year. It's that important. Get back. Okay. Madam Chair, just for purposes of this meeting, so it's a place announced, we originally were gonna put the DBE policy under section 9-34, but we decided to create our own, a, a new section 935. You're also amending article two to include the local preference except where it's excluded by 
law from 3% to 5%. I mm -hmm. thought I would mention that okay. just to make sure, because originally <coughs> this DBE was going to be under 934, but we decided to separate it out. To 935. Okay. Any other questions before I move on? No. All right, we'll move on to tab number 22, authorization to amend the budget for fleet. Uh, in the amount of $154,503 for the purchase of a new roof. Uh, Jennifer Hallman. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at March. Oh, that's there you are. He'll probably have to tell you the details about the roof, but as far as the budget's concerned, um, we received about just over $134,000 from the surplus option of vehicle proceeds. Uh, the remaining amount that would be needed is just over 20000 would come from, or we're asking that it come from contingency um, in order to replace the roof at Fleet and Mark, if you want to go in the detail of the shape of the roof. <laughs> Roofs in bad shape needs to be replaced. And so the board, no, we, we were uh, creative. To, uh, we had a creative approach, both uh, myself and Mark. Uh, we looked at, we're selling cars, old cars, and auctioning all these <coughs> items. Why not take that money and uh, use it strategically and then just layer what we needed in addition with our uh, contingency? And we found that, that that was pretty smart because the, the <coughs> auction cars and things that are auction off, is, they're not tied to the general fund because we don't know what we're going to make off of it. So we don't, that's not even in the general fund. And it, I'll just say Jennifer does not have an earmark for anything specifically because she has no idea what it's going to be. So we thought it was pretty smart move to save this organization and this county some money. And this is not something that just came up. So when we purchased the building uh, a couple of years ago, so there were some issues. We tried repairing the issues with the roof. Um, <coughs> that evidently didn't work. So they had requested it, a new roof in the budget last year, and we decided we would work through the year to try to come up with a new way to fund this. Okay. And we do. All right. Board, you okay? We're going to move on. All right. I'm going back to the committee updates. And, I, I, you know, I just look to the left and see that our director of purchasing here. Thank you, our deputy director here today. Welcome back. I see you got your wing and a sling. Thank so you. I'm, I'm you. So are you feeling okay? Feeling great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And um, Director Peacock, thank you. <laughs> All right, we're going to go with committee updates, and I ask that you keep your, your updates, and I know you probably work so diligently on these. If you could just see if we could drill down with a two-minute approach, and I will, uh, I will accept five minutes, but two minutes is acceptable. I think we're moving right along. Uh, Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee, Commissioner Mitchell, are you here? Okay, we have our, our Gary Dukes, Director Dukes. Could you give us an update on the committee? Yes, ma'am. Be glad to. Parks and Recreation. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we had 16 recommendations from uh, the last time we met. Uh, first one was recommendation of October the 2nd uh, to approve an assistant director for the Parks and Recreation Department in the 2019 budget. On November the 1st, 2018, to approve the selection of the schematic design to, at the estimated cost of $7,185,375 for the Boundary Water Multipurpose Recreation Center and authorize Sutton Architectural Services to proceed with the development. Number three, uh, December the 3rd, 2018, we had a recommendation to grant the right of way for an easement to Greystone Power to access the new Boundary Waters Concession Facility. <coughs> on December the 10th, 2018, to approve a change in architectural and engineering fees to be paid Carter Watkins Associates due to increased size and scope of the new Douglas County Senior Center in Lithia Springs, to include a pool, indoor pickleball courts, and an additional restaurant. <coughs> Number five, on January the 8th, authorize splash equipment funds to acquire three height vision security cameras to be installed at Clinton Nature Reserve at a cost of $4,770. On January the 8th, 2019, to enter into an agreement with the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, accepting the terms and conditions of the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant approved for Clinton Nature Reserve in the amount of $75,000. 
January 8, 2019, to authorize the purchase of three Dell Latitude 3490 i5 laptop computers for the use by the Golden Years Senior Club to assist them in their computer literacy, goal, literacy goals <coughs> and to be funded through the Splash Equipment Funds in the amount of $2,295. On January 8, 2019, to approve award presentation to youth athletes. George Contreras, Chase Wiggins, and Noah Rigsby. On February the 5th, 2019, to approve the purchase of two replacement vehicles for the Park Security Division to be funded through Splash Equipment Funds at a total cost of $53,328. Recommendation of April the 2nd, 2019, to approve integrated construction change order number three in the amount of $15,536 and 16 cents, change order number four in the amount of $3,247.20 for the Boundary Water Concession and Sploss Construction Project. <coughs> Recommendation of April 2nd, 2019 to approve Lowe's Design Change Order number one in the amount of $6,500 for Fair Play Sports Lighting Splash Project. Number 12, the recommendation, recommendation of April the 6th, 2014 for award of the contract to Carter Watkins Associates for, for professional architectural services for the Lithia Spring Senior Center at a cost of $159,000. Recommendation of July 9th, 2019 to approve the purchase of a vehicle for the youth sports coordinator Abigail Drew in the amount of $20,693 to be funded through the Splashed Equipment Funds. Recommendation of July 9th, 2019 to approve change order number five in the amount of $1,153.31 for the Boundary Waters Concession and Construction Splash Project. Recommendation of August the 6th, 2019 to authorize the purchase of 12 trash receptacles to be funded through the Splash Equipment Funds in the amount of $9,244.36. And finally, the recommendation of August the 6th, 2019, to grant a right-of-way easement to Greystone Power for the purpose of moving a power pole at Clinton Nature Reserve. <coughs> Any questions from the board? And what I'm going to do look for the next two, because they're Commissioner Mitchell, I'm going to move them because he, he should be here momentarily. I want to give him the honor and respect. I'll do here in case he has questions. Is he out? No. No. Okay. Uh -huh. Any questions from the board on, on the parks and recreation? And then I will allow um, when the Commissioner Mitchell come back in to chime in. Okay, pretty. It, it, I, I have a comment. You all doing a lot of work. That's a question. Mm -hmm. So a lot of movement from January to August. So thank you. Thank you. A lot of progress. So what I'm going to do is move on and I'll skip on and I'll wait till Commissioner Mitchell come back. I'll, Commissioner Robinson and then Jennifer Hallman, do you have an update for finance? Yeah, we had a hundred recommendations. Uh, number one. <laughs> yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just picking it, Gary. Uh, no, we've been uh, working um, on a, as the committee uh, looking at the current hotel motel tax restructuring. Um, we've also reviewed the travel policy and made some updates to the travel policy. Um, we've also um, been uh, engaging uh, different parties, mostly with the ta uh, tax allocation district, just kind of having some general conversation um, about the um, purpose of a tax allocation district and right now specifically for the city of Douglasville, looking at that. Um, and what y'all saw today um, as well, uh, we've been discussing or have been discussing the SWALS cash flow analysis and making sure that our program managers um, understand the month-to-month -month, uh, analysis that needed to be performed. Okay. Commissioner Robinson is the chairman of our, of our finance committee. Chairman, do you have any? Yeah, I, I, I choose to, you know, as opposed to rehashing what we've done, which I think is important to get, get acknowledged. I'm always sensitive to time. Um, you know, the finance committee is one of those where it's sort of a, um, on demand, depending on what the need is, what needs to be done. Um, sometimes um, conversations don't come forth because it's just it's in the moment what we should be analyzing. But I do appreciate Director Holmes' um, commitment to try to, to hear um, the level of information that we need to make decisions. And so I'm real sensitive in that committee 
to bring things before the full board of commissioners. Sometimes there's this default because you're chairman of the finance committee, where you can just do um, the deal as we would do sort of administrative concurrence. It's like not that committee, we don't. Right? Um, <coughs> that, that's too much power in that one um, to just sort of randomly make financial decisions that affect a whole. So, in that case, um, a lot of times, even when it comes to what I call economic development, we'd be glad to listen, we'd be glad to hear. But um, the input of all my peers are important from that matter. So, Jennifer, I, knew, I know we, we, we kept this short, but I appreciate it. I just want to acknowledge that, Madam Chair. Okay. All right. Our next committee is uh, Residential Development <coughs> Committee. Commissioner Robson, I know you know, you'll start off and then you call on your director. James Worthington, director, come on up and just mm -hmm. highlight a couple of meetings that we've had, which is, I think, a quarterly. Sure. Highlights of our speakers. And so uh, good morning. Uh, thus far, our primary focus has kind of been education on the, the market, general health of the market, trends of the market, uh, availability of uh, lots, houses, sizes, prices. Uh, we've had a number of different market analysts, industry specialists. Our last meeting, uh, we had information from Amy McCoy. She's a local realtor, run, runs her own business. Um, I believe it's my hometown realty. She was excellent, gave a lot of information. Uh, a lot of stuff that we could use as a committee to, you know, look at future ideas. Um, the biggest outcome thus far is the pipe farms is, that we've been working on. Those, uh, the eight subdivisions that were part of it, six are complete as far as the WSA and the pipes being in the ground. One of the others is under construction and one is in the works. Both of those are also being handled by WSA. Um, and one of the subdivisions that has been completed has since came in and gotten all of their building permits. So that's a, a big plus, showing that we're, we're actually making progress on some of this and it's beneficial. I want to make a comment but right behind that. Think about residential housing. Um, again, um, yes, the pipe cities, the pipe farms were uh, important to focus on. That was like, latent opportunity, latent capacity that it really was dragging on our digest for the most part because it was ready to go. It also was important to be inclusive of the small builder who pretty much built Memphis County. I know right now we've got a lot of national builders coming in and people, there's some commentary where, well, you got these big guys coming here, can we get some custom home in this life? But they're the ones with the warehouse lines. They're the ones that get the financing. So one of the things that we use this committee is to also, you gotta balance our, our, our housing stock. Um, affordability is important, right? Um, obviously, land is becoming very, um, the, metro, the bigger, the, the poor, the sun of the Southeast, is becoming inexpensive. I mean, getting too expensive, it's getting hot. It, 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 that concentrated, like, okay, so moving out to the burbs, right? So at one more time, you, as a commissioner, you gotta look at the whole picture. You can't be stuck in one little place like, okay, don't y'all see this? We, you know, again, so you're fixing the residential areas that we're currently looking at. You're trying to retrofit the, uh, the, the, the transportation, which we're gonna talk about, like, okay. So the design that we do going forward, like in District 4, where you have raw, do a better job, right? We just didn't, I mean, the, the, the leadership that when all this sprawl from, I guess, from readers, um, um, leadership to now, which is really our generation through time to now, we didn't anticipate none of this. And we're trying to have to unfix, retrofit, like, oh my God, look at this. There was just no, no anticipation that this many people would come out. And it's not going to stop, right? So how we properly design our future land use, Ron, yes, James, we talked about that in the house. Like, okay, guys, y'all got to think through this. We, we do have to have input when we got developers that are coming out here like, okay guys, it matters. You put 1,000 people over here, you put 200 people over here, like are y'all thinking about the road that's gonna take for this? Do y'all think about the future? Do you like, I mean, and it's one of those, again, I get property owners, property rights, do what they wanna do. I get that, y'all know we understand that. But and from a design, from an architect, from an overall, like okay, now how are we gonna do this? Are we, are we doing proper planning? Are we funding the future, in other words, like, yeah, you're going to have to fund, like Riverside and Thornton were funded in a way that <laughs> that dark fiber and that four and a half billion that we got, we didn't do a double thing to benefit. We benefited from it. 
this leadership did not do anything per steps. We inherited that. We benefit from four and a half billion. We didn't lay that infrastructure. My point, point is for the future, for 2040, I'm probably not here in 2040. I, I mean, I, but I'm going to make sure that I leave for our, you, you guys, this children, grandchildren, that's going to be in the Sentinel and doing this, that we give them a, a proper chance. Right, to extend this, like, okay, we're sitting on four and a half billion, what, what, what we, whatever that is transferable as take home tax. What are y'all going to do with this? Y'all see these very obvious problems. It's like, okay, we got to be thoughtful. We can't just be selfish, me, 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 no, my, my, no, no. It's like, come on, guys. And so I appreciate these committees, Madam Chair. They, they are very, very important um, to, to diversify input. Um, staff, you guys are doing a great job and stuff, and we're bringing in great speakers. And again, mine was more educational. Don't try to know everything. Try to always be lifelong learning. And so I thought that was important. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to transportation com uh, committee update. Um, our director, Valentin. Miguel actually has a hundred, but don't don't say all hundred, Miguel. <laughs> keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> but now I, I'll keep it short. Uh, we have a number of projects that are underway and we have projects in the design phase and as you heard earlier we're planning for the future as well uh, the maxim road project intersection of thornton and maxim is uh, we are anticipating getting a notice to proceed from gdot to award that contract so we can go into construction uh, the highway five at the Walgreens, Douglas Boulevard, southbound dual left turn lanes. Obviously, you heard about <coughs> they uh, hit the water line, so they are under construction. Uh, we are, um, in fact, this morning we got some of the last paperwork for the um, Doris Road, High Point Road intersection improvement project, so we anticipate having a pre-construction meeting probably early next week on that one. Uh, so those projects are underway. We have also gotten uh, proposals for, or for the task orders for a number of projects like Douglas Boulevard at Highway 5 and northbound right turn lane. So we will be, I will be bringing that to you uh, as a recommendation for award for the design. Uh, also Riverside at uh, Thornton Road, uh, analysis of that intersection. Uh, be bringing that to the board as well. And the sidewalk project on Maxim Road north of the uh, DOT project uh, to extend the sidewalks to uh, uh, into Cup County to make that, co uh, to, to connect the sidewalks there. Uh, that is gonna be under design, that will be coming uh, to the board. Uh, those are some of the projects that, uh, that we have underway. Um, there are others that we are analyzing that uh, are further out a little bit. For example, the Lee Road Extension Project. We have, uh, we're underway with an analysis there. Uh, there will be <coughs> recommendations for the next phase of that project uh, to, to come before uh, the board as well. And as we have discussed over the last uh, couple of years, the Lee Road Widening Project is being uh, packaged so that it could go into construction <coughs> next year. Probably will go uh, be advertised sometime in the May, June timeframe. By the time we award the contracts, we're looking into October-ish, and um, then the, the actual construction may start October, November of next year if all goes well. Uh, that is all, unless you have any questions. Okay, yes. anything on Whitestone Culvert? Has yeah, been, Whitestone, uh, that is under construction. Uh, <coughs> that project is under construction and uh, they're, they're making progress. Uh -huh. We're gonna have a party. Yes. Only <laughs> 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 <On> 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years party. Okay. Yeah, well, just to close out and, and, and back to the Lee Road and back to recasting, re, re um, I'm going back to the importance of having accurate and real-time <coughs> intelligence as we saw that, you know, the board of officials made certain decisions. Um, the plan that was really set out needed to be reset. We knew the debt for a few was hot. We knew the role was sort of like, okay, that's y'all coming in hot here. But with that, we were able to go and we met last week, a courtesy of Madam Chair and Miguel and Mark, we met with um, the office of the Commissioner of GDOT. 
we just went and met directly. We just had our own conversation. He says, look, we need y'all support. Can you give us a little relief? Um, we, we need some time. Right, again, I teach project management at Georgia State. All right, by time, adjust the schedule. Can we work with you? And we had a good conversation where they gave us some pressure. We yes, we had to put up more uh, to make this happen. We had to we had to pay homage to what you had to pay homage to. But there was an acknowledgement of timing. Like uh, again, the state has limited resources. They got 159 counties. You know how big the state of Georgia is. They like we get to you when we get we, we got limited funds, no more than we do, and, and they can't get to everything. But every now and then, you got to know what your priority is. You got to know how to leverage it. And I appreciate Madam Chair and Miguel and Mark, y'all making that happen to make sure that that project is smooth it out, guys. My point is don't let it all hit next year. Take off the gas. You know, Terry was like, oh, it's going to be tight. You know, okay, well, then let off the gas. And if there's an implication upstream from a supply chain, let them know, like, look, but don't kill it. Don't lock it to 2024, 2028. You know, Miguel did a great job of what we call refinancing that project coming in as a priority. We gave him a priority as a board, his first mm -hmm. birthday, fix Lee Road. So he fixed it in lieu of the spa, so yes, it had an impact. Absolutely, we gave him that directive as one of his first duties. But with that, we didn't want to lose that priority and their commitment from us. We put up that 11 extra million dollars for something that we shouldn't have had to have done without losing that grant. Uh, and so I appreciate all the work that was done to sort of keep that project because it's so important. It's another effort to relieve pressure congestion. That, that, that east-west connector across those three commission districts, ultimately the fourth one, you know, based on Commissioner Molker's vision was, it was, uh, uh, you know, the southern arc. The one highway all the way around the city of Douglasville back up to the other. That's the vision. <coughs> all four commission districts will be impacted. It's all dealing with, and so it was a priority. So again, um, we appreciate that effort. You know, a lot of things go uns, um, unsaid. They're not formal, but sometimes it's the informality of things that we do to get stepped up. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Director Valentine. Next, we'll move on to, to Commissioner Carlton, uh, Benefits Committee. Commissioner. Thank you, Fred. Yes, um, well, I want to be quick. Uh, our uh, biggest item that we're working on right now is open enrollment. I uh, want to personally thank the board for holding the uh, special call meeting, which allowed us uh, some more time to uh, finalize our renewal and, uh, and move forward with that process. So uh, we're working, MSI and myself, we're back and forth, getting all the open enrollment materials together, and uh, we should have packets for uh, department heads, hopefully by week's end, and uh, no later than the uh, early part of next week. And we'll be able to get that uh, out to the employees and have a, uh, a good timeline for all the enrollment period. So uh, <coughs> last meeting was held on the, uh, for the benefits committee, was held on the 21st of October, uh, at which time we revised our recommendation for the board. And um, uh, the special call meeting was held and we moved forward with that. So uh, that's the uh, biggest thing that we're working on right now is open enrollment. Thank you for Thank you, Board. Would you like to defer that? Since Matt is here. No, I think Matt okay. the safety board. Um, okay. The director of it is Matt Laverne. One of the biggest things that has come out of that uh, community <coughs> is the safety board policy <coughs> manual, which everyone can now access <coughs> and celebrate Douglas County website. Uh, it, uh, it really lays out every department's role in regards to safety, which safety, safety. yeah safety procedures. Um, and the second thing that I thought was really cool that Matt did was he allowed for every form to be downloadable. So now <coughs> no department has an excuse as to why they didn't fill out a form or they didn't have access to something. Everything is online, it's available, it's in PDF form. Uh, so he's just made it really, really um, accessible. Um, because it helps the county when we're able to capture that information real time so that people's you know, versions of events aren't lost. Mm -hmm. So uh, it helps us when we are um, giving our information to the insurance carrier. So um, that's one of the biggest things. I'm really proud of what <coughs> Matt Laverne has done in the safety board. Yeah, so that's it for that update. Mm -hmm. Purchasing Oversight Committee, Commissioner Carthen. That would be... <laughs> <laughs> that would be Don. Don. Okay. Um, currently, um, three of the uh, minutes that we're working on are on presented to you today on the agenda. As far as the uh, 
approval authorities for the commissioners. We're also working at the changing the local county preference from 3% to 5%. And we are also working on the disadvantaged business enterprise um, to implement that as a code of ordinance for the county. Along with that DBE classification, we're working alongside the IS department to be able to track those DBE classifications as we go forward um, once we're approved to um, uh, um, present this as a public hearing and it's amended. We're also looking at cost reductions, cost avoidance, and of course, um, we view, review and go over any projects that are put out on the street as far as the request for proposals, request for qualifications, and any invitation to bids that we may have. I would just add that the, the committee, although it's a new committee, we just really didn't know what to expect in terms of, of this committee and uh, its outcome. But um, with our <coughs> with Director Peacock and Don and of course Mark, we have um, actually been able to do some great things, I think, and, and, and have good dialogue. And so the, uh, the outcome of that committee is what she summed up. But one thing that I want, really wanted to harp on is that um, all the business that we do really does come through purchasing. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we have continuity from the level of which Mark and, and Madam Chair are able to sign contracts and, and put those out to how we put out RFPs to who thinks that they're you know, they're, they're able to, uh, to bid on those RFPs and how we bring them in, how we say we're open for business. So it really is, it's, it's, it's all encompassing. So. Um, Madam Chair, I just want to commend you. This board was a great idea. It really, really was. So, uh, I can't wait to see what the next iteration of the board, whether I'm chairman or not, I can't wait to see what else comes out of this board. Thank you so much, and I appreciate y'all also placing a lens, the purchasing of site community, placing a lens on our contracts to mm -hmm. see how the, the negotiation component, to see how often they've been negotiated, and just for pricing and uh, once we want to hammer on our expenses if we could, and that's an opportunity. So, thank you, uh, Commissioner. I just one have a question. Uh, uh, you said you're going to change the local um, preference. Yes, the county preference. preference yeah, yes. from three to five. Yes. Uh, are you going to let the locals know that you're doing that? Um, <laughs> because uh, some some people I've heard some people say, well, I don't bid because I don't ever get it. Right. So, so <laughs> three percent. This may be an opportunity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the ordinance. It's coming before the board. The board. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you back? Okay. Uh, okay. We'll move on to you, Commissioner Guider. Uh, you have the fire and EMS committee. Well, I'm going to yield to the uh, chief, but before he says it, uh, starts his. Best of all the accomplishments this uh, <coughs> uh, committee has made, but uh, it was very disappointing to find out that our firemen cannot come back part time. And I, I don't know if there's any way we can address that to a s state organization or anything. Uh, maybe our legislators or. <laughs> Nope. No way. Okay, but that, that was very disappointing. We already had those positions filled on that fire department. <laughs> okay, Chief. Okay, uh, well, we had a total of, uh, we met 12 times since the last update, and we got 12 recommendations. So, uh, the highlights are we adopted EMS rates. Uh, we, we, uh, made some changes there. We lowered the driving age from 21 to 18, which helped us attract more applicants. Uh, several of our recommendations had to do with the radio system and the mock alerting system for our fire stations. So uh, we spent uh, $23,600 uh, to upgrade for mock alert for the CAD system. Uh, we did a change order for our fire station number three, where we bought the uh, storage container, had to relocate the meter base and hook up the utilities for the temporary housing. Uh, we had another change order for $20,281 for station three, another mock alert uh, upgrade 
for our IT infrastructure <coughs> so that it would hook into our fire stations uh, of $19,350 and six cents. Uh, we rejected all the bids for the metal building at our fire training complex. We went back and we refined the scope of the work uh, in the project because uh, the, the uh, what do you call those, the, uh, the architectural and design services, uh, we also approved that. Uh, so if that's been done now, so we're ready to go back out and bid for that building. Uh, Fifteen thousand uh, dollars was approved from SPLOS funds to furnish the new fire station. Uh, we awarded a bid for a pumper truck to Pierce <coughs> Manufacturing. Uh, they will be here this Thursday to go over the shop drawings with us. The uh, No Two Facts program, we've talked about that already, so everybody knows where we're at on that. Uh, Artifacts is the uh, is the business that's going to uh, redesign our uh, metal building for us. And then uh, the last one was purchase of balli uh, ballistic vest and helmets uh, from Splost. And uh, we've got our sample vest in and we'll be ordering those shortly. Uh, and I would like to thank all our commissioners for the support they give the fire department, but especially our, our two committee commissioners that uh, spend their extra time doing what they do for us. So, any questions? Any questions or comments? Great job. Uh, making some progress. Great. Um, your <coughs> next committee, uh, Commissioner Guidance Tax Abatement Committee. Okay, uh, I guess I'll take that one. Um, the Tax Abatement uh, Committee has been setting up a procedure so that we know uh, when someone exceeds their cap on their bond because they're taxable once they exceed that cap and we found two or three of them that we have built for the uh, excess and um, but just the procedure the right hand did not know what the left hand was doing and it was just a big big mess so we've got the procedure set in place and I think from now on we can monitor any of the tax abatements to make <coughs> sure that first of all that they're reporting to us as far as their capital outlay and also um, um, that we make sure that they, if they go over their cap on the bonds then they get taxed on that because they're, they're not abated on that amount. So that's what we've spent most of our time with, and I, and I appreciate everybody that's on that committee because it is a pretty large committee because of the different departments involved, the tax commissioner, uh, the finance department, and okay. huh? appraisal. Appraisal, yes. But, uh, and Mr. Corbin, he has just been uh, a great ad asset to that board and the county on other issues. So, so. Public safety is really good. Uh, Bobby, do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and take okay. it. Bobby, could you, break, could you share some of the things that we met with Trent North on, Superintendent North? Yeah, I didn't know if you wanted me to talk about that a little bit, but there's an ongoing conversation about uh, adding SROs in the school system to every single school. But I don't know if you want to talk about that. But, but um, for us, we've met twice this year. Um, and. Um, Back in July, there was a, a big uh, operation. We seem to, in, once a year, do a big uh, training exercise. We did ours last year. This year, the city did theirs at Burnett Elementary. It was an active shooter. Uh, we went over that and discussed that. Uh, it was an improvement uh, in some ways from last year. Some of the things we learned from ours over at Mason Creek, uh, we were able to overcome there. And um, uh, and uh, we it, overall it went it went very well I think this year um, next year the fire department is their choice to put on an operation so the way we did it was the first year was sheriff's office second year police department now the fire department mm -hmm. so what that is their choice of what they want to do for 2020 so that'll be interesting mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the courthouse security project and what has went uh, live this year uh, the from the as a result of the construction 
everything seems to be doing pretty well. I came in the other day, we had a big jury day, I believe, and if we understand things went pretty well once they opened up all the um, metal detectors and things. So it looks like the flow is working as we were hoping it was going to. Uh, I don't believe there was inclement weather that day, so I don't know, but I mean, that may be something we may not be able to, to help. But security-wise, everything seems to be working pretty well with the uh, upgrades and the enhancements that was, that was put out. And the last thing that I was going to discuss was that we're getting further into trying to look to see the feasibility <coughs> about some kind of a county driving uh, complex, driver training complex for all county employees, not just public safety. And um, if I'm not remember correctly, we were talking about something in the neighborhood 20, 25 acres is what we talked about in the meeting, but we're in the planning stages or the thought processes of that to see if how feasible that may be in the, in the, in the near future. But from a standpoint, it would, it would encompass all departments uh, in the county to be able to that drive cars, to be able to have driver training that should help the employees and help us in our insurance. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I just like to add just one thing about the uh, uh, active shooter mm -hmm. and that we are just taking a, good, a big proactive stance on that. Uh, you know, we don't want anything like what happened in Florida and Broward mm -hmm. County to happen here in Douglas County. But I think we're, we're, uh, we hope we never have to use it. But it's mm -hmm. good that we're taking a proactive uh, stance on it, and we are better prepared if anything like that happens here. From a public safety standpoint, sheriff's office especially, we don't just do once a year training. We're doing training like that throughout the year, especially through our tactical units and especially our SROs. Uh, we do that throughout the year, but we try to do one big joint exercise with the other departments and stuff to to see how well we can we work together doing that and so far it's been pretty well pretty good. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Any other can I do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, you bring up a good point uh, that we got about uh, being proactive and uh, and again I commend all of you guys with that, you know, all things public safety. No problem. But when you mention the school system uh, and, and I guess from a funding, again I approach everything from the lens of financials. Um, has the board of commissioners are we are we in a position, have we provided sufficient funding to ensure, just like on um, the Scorpion unit on, on the west side or Scorpion unit on Thornton, uh, where, you know, um, as you have increases in crime, you want to make sure that it's sufficient. Like, look, that's an important area. Funding. Have we, have, are y'all comfortable that every school, I don't care if it's high school, middle school, what we call junior, the junior high back in the day, um, are, have we sufficiently funded you guys um, do you have some adequate, or are you trying to stretch it? You don't. If you don't, if it's a safety issue, you don't want to get into. But I would like to have some type of assurance, and we can talk about it perhaps in retreat, Madam Chair, yeah. that we have sufficient funding, um, um, and not just because I know sometimes there's always argument. Well, who pays for what? I'm like I can't believe y'all are having this conversation. We we fund this yeah. thing, and so anyway, my my point really is that I just like to I hear it. I hear a lot of symbolic. I've been around a long time. I, I see how the money is. I see the, 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 the wrinkling of their hands. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm ever in that position, I don't ever want to just have this conversation about who pays for it. It's too important. So, thank you. Okay. Thank All right, you. thank you. Uh, ben, I mean, that I was at, uh, in the midst of the Columbine um, shooting. Some of this is, is very delicate in terms of conversation. Uh, Vice Chairman, we are going to have those discussions at our work. But our retreat, I'm sure I say our budget retreats, so that we already have that on the agenda and ready to go. Um, and Major Holmes, if you could delicately just share with the, uh, the board that you did meet with Superintendent North, you had a couple of uh, things that you needed within the school system to get access to the computers and things you missed. Yeah, is they, that confidential? I just don't. Yeah, we had uh, we we uh, were able to work out some security uh, issues in relation to should the inevitable happen that we have access to the proper equipment to do what needs to be done. So we are we've already done that commission. That's about as delicate as I put yeah, that. I to, really don't want to talk about yeah, we want to. Yeah, we're trying to not talk about it. But anyway, it, it was in our last meeting, Commissioner Guida, but I, we met last week. I took mm -hmm. care of it. It's done. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Very good meeting. I yeah, we'll, it was very good meeting. All right, well, we'll move on. We have 
one more, which is uh, the pension advisory board, and then also we have our uh, technology update. So you have yes. anything for us? Uh, oh, that's yeah, me. The last meeting of that board, uh, that advisory board, was on August 23rd. Um, and part of my agenda item that was on the agenda uh, today in regards to the amendment to the GEP Corps plan relates to the pension committee. So okay. just trying to uh, find a way as we uh, prepare for the, uh, uh, the sunset clause to, to become effective uh, December 31st of 2021. Uh, these are some of the, the items that we discussed in, in committee to uh, help to uh, uh, create some flexibility for public safety so we can prepare for that. Okay. Thank you for the update uh, from my committee. All right, we have our last one, which is technology. Is Commissioner Mitchell back? Mm -hmm. yes. Commissioner Mitchell? <coughs> just want to make sure we have one, just one update. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure we were here at him before he starts. <coughs> Thank you. Our committee has had a really tough time getting together the last few months, but I'm excited that we're getting together this afternoon. Um, I'd like to thank the entire board for approving our proclamation uh, for October as National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Had several activities going this month related to that. Um, one of them, that, a couple of them affected everyone. We had um, cyber awareness training that we pushed out at the beginning of the month. Uh, we were sitting at about 70% complete on that. Uh, as far as all county employees taking that training, uh, it runs through Friday, uh, and then that will expire, and we'll hit it again in the first quarter of next year. Um, big thing we've been working on the entire year was trying to hire an uh, actual security administrator uh, to work full-time on our staff. Uh, we were fortunate enough again early last month uh, to bring in a gentleman named Dat Loop. Um, several things have changed already with him in in, uh, in the fold. Uh, one was we pushed out a much more uh, lengthy, much more secure password policy uh, that affects all employees and um, how we're able to log in and out of our system. Uh, a lot of things have happened in the background that nobody will ever see with policies and procedures that we're doing downstairs. <coughs> and again, we're excited to share that and ask for some you know other guidance from the technology community later today. A couple of other big things that we've got going on was Office 365 was approved for implementation this year. Uh, we've had several meetings with the vendor who's pushing that out. We've made a lot of good progress in the last couple of weeks on a project that's really taken a lot longer to kind of knock out than we had hoped it would. Uh, and the reason for that is, uh, for people that don't know, Windows 10 uh, or Windows 7 uh, sunsets January 14th. So that's important for you at home as well. Um, <coughs> Microsoft will no longer be pushing out security updates for Windows 7, so any Windows 7 computer that you have at the office or at home uh, becomes a huge security problem at that point. So if you have it at home, you have to think about getting you know, a new computer or getting an upgrade. Uh, here we've had, uh, we have about 700 computers that we're responsible for. Um, through our PC refresh program, we were able to get about 500 of those updated just naturally. Now that was about 250 that we had to catch up on really quickly. So that's taken us a big part of the second half of the year trying to get that squared away. And it's kind of slowed some other things down. But we do have a program in place. Uh, we're down to about 130 <coughs> machines that need to be replaced and they'll all be done by January 14th. We're excited about that. Very good. Thank you. Okay. And Commissioner Mitchell, is one more, which is program committee. I don't know how you want it. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I did, and I left that to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know left that out for me. Outside of the program committee, and, and our dear friend is out today, Mark, doing something, I think it is. Yes, oh, we're working on the website. The website is, is the PF, the RFQ. Okay, the RFQ is on the way, and I don't know if you want to share any kind of what we are, but we kind of, we've got a couple of presentations that are forthcoming. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, we're looking at that. Uh, the sign is outside. You guys see how well that has come about, and we're looking at putting some policy together to kind of talk about what's, what can and can't go up on that sign. So we're working on that kind of good stuff. Um, Mark, what am I missing? And we, uh, that's uh, the two biggest items that, big we, yeah, that we got going on. Outside of that, that's all we've got on the program. So. Which, which okay. sign? Did I miss something? Because I could. What, what sign? No, the, the, the marketing. Oh, team. Yeah, oh, got it. Oh, okay. I, I, I heard something different. Sorry. All right. But outside of that, that's all we've got from Brooklyn.
We are almost done. I'm just telling you, we've been pushing it. So, Mark, I want you to, if you could go with 10 and 12, County Administrative Business is authorization for Georgia Power to install street lights at various locations, shown under attachment at a cost of $16,067. 67, I'm sorry, 56 cents to be paid for 2016 SPLOS bonds and authorized children to sign all related documents. Um, yes, ma'am. So, that includes <coughs> Georgia Power in, includes three uh, roadways and four intersections. Um, so the total installation cost, as you said, is $16,067.56. Um, the total um, yearly cost, no, the monthly cost is $1,000. <coughs> $213.65 for the roadways and $506.68 for the um, intersections. And the list is included in your packet unless you want me to read all these intersections. Okay. What initiatives do you need to read the intersections? This is loss funded. Okay. Any questions? Tab number 11. If you just read it. Tab number 11, authorization for Greystone to install street lights at various locations shown on the attachment, uh, which is also the same attachment. It's also included under this item. At a cost of $332,925.20 to be paid from 2016 SWAS funds and authorized the chairman to sign all documents. Um, so for Greystone, it's eight roads and 26 intersections. Um, and most of the way these are split up, it's by territory. Um, so it's, so Greystone's total cost for uh, the additional monthly fee that can't be paid for by Splost is $291.75 for the intersections and for the roadway segments. Uh, $3,232.25. One of the roadways is Highway 166 from Tuscany Hills to Highway 5. Um, this is a really big one. Usually that cost is about $40,000 per mile. Um, so the chairman and I talked about this. In order to get this under budget, um, we could only spend about $250,000 on that segment of road. So we'll try to spread them out at how many the worst locations. How many miles is How many miles is that, that, that Tuscany to? Um, I do not remember. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm trying to compare it to, you did Riverside, seven and a half miles. Right, what, 128 lights. I can just look it up at break. I can look it up. I can check it All right. Well, we're going to do, we're going to take a 10 minute recess, guys. It's about, it's, we're almost there. I've tried to cover as much as possible. We just need to look at the public hearing items when we come back. And we have uh, a few uh, business items. And then I'll call for an executive session that I want our asset we have to need to go into the executive session. Do I need to call for a recess with the Board of Commissions? The Board of Commissions, do I have a motion? Can just I can just recess. announce. Okay. We have to let's take a 10 minute recess. It's about 10.25. If you could just come back at 10.35. I mean, 12, 25. <laughs> I'm still on the other time. You two far back. We will resume our meeting. And um, everyone had not seen me for the 10 minute, 10 minute recess. What I'm going to do for public hearings, I mean, for the public hearings tomorrow, guys, um, all our prospective uh, directors just be prepared to speak. Uh, we'll have one tomorrow on the Article 2 purchasing, purchasing procedures, and the Douglas County Code of Ordinances. And that'll be by um, Don Eckers, our deputy director, will be providing an update or should I say presenting to the Board of Commissioners. Cat number eight is to consider amendments to the Douglas County Code of Ordinances regarding Section 6 of 350 of Article 22 Property Maintenance Code, code in Section 11 71 definitions on Article uh, 5 noise control, and that'll be by uh, Phil Schaefer. And Phil, if you could, what, what we're going to do is see if we can just wait tomorrow to, to tomorrow. So when the board have questions, 
but just kind of wrap this to turn in the interest of time. And then next, last but not least, will be the public hearing on 11-5, 2019 and 10 a.m. approval for the buying, uh, beer and wine sales alcohol license for Mole Southwest Grill on 894 Thornton Road, Lithia Springs, Georgia, 30122. And that will be by our uh, manager, Ron Roberts, standing his own. So, Board of Commissioners, are you okay with just hearing about it tomorrow? Do you need a briefing? I just want to make sure before these are public hearings, so yeah, it's for public. the public. Are we deciding tomorrow? We just it's the first step in it. We are deciding. To the public and we're deciding we'll tomorrow. So you want you all want to hear something? I don't want to go too fast. If you do, I'll just have each one to speak. I'm briefly. comfortable when I'm looking at the news. I can't speak very loud. Board of Commissioners, Commissioner Geyer, Commissioner Mitchell. Which all like number to seven? What the purchasing procedure? What's changing there? Is that what she talked mm -hmm. about earlier? Mm -hmm. So this is just on eight and nine that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. What about eight and nine? You all need enough. You just wanted to present today. Just want to make sure. The noise control, I guess, uh, cutting out construction at a certain time of the day or something like that. Phil, could you give us a brief, <laughs> brief update? Just want to make sure everybody is aware. Uh, yeah, this is just to update the definitions of residential, commercial, and industrial zone districts to uh, reflect the current code. The way it's written right now in the Code of Ordinances, it refers to the old zoning ordinance. So we're going to change the definitions to refer to the new Unified Development Code. We're not changing any of the substance or the standards. This is just a reference change. Okay. The same with the other one. The other is just okay. a code reference change to make it more flexible. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Board. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. No problem. And then we're going to move, uh, what about public hearing for the approval for the uh, beer and wine sales? Uh, Manager Ron Roberts, if you could just come up briefly in case the board has some questions, can you just give them a, just a abbreviated? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, so we have a completed package from Abid uh -huh. Koala to sell beer and wine at, at Moe's. Um, he's gone through the RAS training. We've got uh, the, the signs and the uh, ordinances have all been uh, posted. Um, Correctly, this is a complete packet. The applicant will be in attendance tomorrow for the public hearing. If there's any questions, I'm glad to answer them. <coughs> any questions from the board? Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Sure. Thank you. We're going to move on to tab with back to business items. I know we're flipping and flopping, but we're back on the business items and we're on tab number 23. Authorization to enter into a professional services contract with the consulting firm of Goodman Mills K. Uh, Wood in the amount of $38,880 to evaluate the responses to the request for qualification solicitation uh, number 19-017 to establish a list of qualified on-call consulting firms for use of future transportation projects to be paid out of the CTF uh, as recommended by the Transportation <coughs> Committee and authorized the Chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Yes, Madam Chair. This, this item, we, we have a, uh, a, an RFQ a request for qualifications that's been uh, advertised. We got responses back. We're ready to have a, an analysis and a ranking uh, done. And uh, this firm will, uh, will do that for us. And, and uh, it is a two-phase process, so they will give us a, a narrowed list of uh, recommended to proceed from <coughs> phase one to phase two. And then they will do the same thing uh, with phase two. And uh, at the end of the exercise, we will have a list of consulting firms that can be engaged by the county without having to go back out and advertise again. Uh, for any number of projects in, in the future. Now, all of those firms will be on standby. They, they will have a zero value contract if awarded. And uh, upon the county identifying projects that you want to move forward, uh, then we would obtain a, uh, a proposal from them with a dollar value and bring that to the board for an actual award of a task. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, we'll move on to the next item. Tap number 20. Yeah. Just ask the question. Yes. Are we still on number 23? Mm -hmm. I yeah, 23. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, we, so when we put it out an RFQ and then they come back, we can't in-house decide 
that they <coughs> met the qualifications? <laughs> uh, we have we have on occasion uh, done that, and uh, uh, <coughs> there was a desire expressed to to have some an independent look at uh, at the number of. Uh, Respondents. The first time around, I think we had something like 15. This time around is 22 or 23. Uh, so it, it takes quite a bit of time, but uh, uh, the transportation committee <coughs> expressed a desire to uh, to have an independent uh, evaluator. But, you know, we we just have this very qualified staff that has all this education, and we're not honing in on it. <laughs> We're still having to go outside, so we could just hire anybody uh, without all these degrees if we're not going to use them. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> why? Why do we? Why was this decision made? Uh, because I think you're very qualified. I think probably uh, your staff and your engineers that you have, and they can't make the decision in house without going outside to get a consultant to tell us what's better. I don't understand that. Again, if there was some discussion. I, I would defer to uh, to the vice chair. Uh, we had discussion at the committee, and he can go into more detail. I, I just want to make sure well, you finish. Yes, I, I still don't understand why we have to get a consultant to look at qualifications when well, we wrote the qualifications <laughs> that makes sense mm -hmm. thank you okay you go back I go back okay. first of all, yeah they covered fun yeah I, I was fine we just didn't want to do it that way right and we, at, at, the, at, at the end of the day we, we talked about this in the transportation mm -hmm. committee and this all started with a comment that said it wouldn't make a difference when we want to make sure like who was involved in the decision making. You don't give away your power to staff that you can't ask questions. We are educated as well. All right, so when it comes down to, but okay, who gonna win that argument? No, all it had to be was a little acknowledgement that give us some assurances that it was inclusive. When we began to challenge the processes, so well, how'd you go about doing that? We began to peel this onion back. We didn't know what we were looking for. We just sort of like, I just want to make sure, was it a fair process? Did everybody have a chance to participate? Uh, and we've had this conversation. So not only did uh, we pause in transportation, we sent over to purchasing. Get another different look. <coughs> this ain't nothing new. We wanted to make sure that, because what my concern was, you about to give away three-year contracts. This one, hold on, let me, let, me, let me get into that. No, you don't give away power like that. Your job is to check and balance it, to make sure that, okay, so it's just you and one person in a corner, and we about to lock engineers up for three, it's like, no way. No way. So it was one of those, like, well, let's get a third-party objective. Yes, traditionally, it is acknowledged. It could have been done in-house, and there's no doubt that he had 40 years, and ain't going to find too many 40-year people that can contend with him. But we still wanted what we wanted. We wanted assurance, and we wanted um, it to be fair, so we got a third party to feel good about it. We went round and round to find the, right, find the right person. We finally got somebody. The issue was about bias. We looked about, what, three well, the, the person came up with recommendations mm -hmm. for this person. We came with person. <coughs> County administrator came. We couldn't find nobody because you heard them being honest. More than like, no, we're going to be biased on this. Because what was going to happen is that you're going to have these guys who grew up together that were stacking the teams. And they admitted this. And it's like, okay, we, we came. That was our whole point. So we appreciate the police being honest. That like, I can't even evaluate y'all because I, I like these firms more than I know about those firms. So those firms that are not on the grid get excluded. And again, just not, not in the midst of doing a disadvantaged business enterprise, we're gonna sit there and allow three-year contracts on engineer to go through just like that, like, no. So that's why we chose to not do it that way. And it took him off the hook to say, well, let's just make sure that it's objective and bring somebody who is not so um, connected uh, to make sure this thing is fair, um, equal opportunity. So we just chose to do it that way because there's people here in the county that though, though they, they're locked out, they don't get considered. Right? So we wanted to make sure that people had a fair chance. There was no um, you know, additional communications to people that um, it just 
keep it fair. And that's it. So we, we talked about it. It was no unilateral <laughs> decision in the corner somewhere. We all decided uh, from a committee, went to another committee, went back to committee, went back to committee, had a joint group together in there. We really talked about this, and we knew the, the magnitude of that. I mean, that would be like me locking up all attorneys or a lock it for three years or locking up anybody else, a category of providers <coughs> that says, do y'all know what y'all doing here? And it was real subtle, like, oh, this can get away from us. And it's that type of, you're, you're maintaining the old traditional, like, I, now, again, I thank goodness for more, like, no, we can't do this. We, we, we would be too biased and stuff. We, we, we know what the commissioner is asking for. they like, no, because all we're going to do is the people that we know that we're comfortable for, so we're going to wait them probably just by default. And it, it's like, no. And so I appreciate, I respect that, that, that they, they chose to bid off of this. And so that's what we do. We don't have to label this. Just vote your conscience. Maybe I'll come to you. I don't agree with this. Mm -hmm. I'd like for it to be a separate business item. Thank That's you. Easy. Okay. We can do that. We'll move on to tab number 24, authorization to enter into a consulting contract with Will Bond Engineering in the amount of $26,658.09. To provide traffic monitoring services around the mall area during the 2019 uh, holiday and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents directly. Yes, Madam Chair, th this is a, an item that uh, uh, we move every year about this time. Uh, we have had discussion with the city. They also want to participate this year. And uh, the, the next item is related to it. Uh, they mm -hmm. are, are going to participate uh, on a prorated basis uh, on the cost. The county would have to front the money and then it would be reimbursed by them uh, at the beginning of the following year, beginning of, uh, in January. Okay. That was both 24 and 25 that you just discussed, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, it would, yes, it would be uh, uh, 25, that's yeah. correct. Okay. So, Board of Commissioners, we, you, have, you have any questions regarding those two? We merge those two together. Okay, yes. Tab, okay. Um, Commissioner Mitchell. So, so how, how do they say how much? <coughs> Who's contributing what? Twenty six six fifty eight is the number I'm looking at. Yeah, that is so, the that is the total amount. Okay, um, so so have you guys agreed upon what the, the we have? What what is what it? We have okay. and uh, the okay. the amount that the city will participate uh, that will reimburse the county. Oh, okay. Okay, the, the city will uh, will reimburse the county eleven thousand one hundred and seven dollars and fifty four cents. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. All right. So you guys have worked that, that part of it out. Yeah. And, and so this is only a, a, a study, or or they going to do some work. this. What, what no, is actually, this? this is this is to monitor the traffic around the mall. Uh, mm -hmm. Chapel Hill and Highway 5 during the holidays monitor. to be able to monitor the, tra uh, the, the traffic. Essentially, we the county has the ability to change the signal timing yes. at those intersections, mm -hmm. but you have to either be at the location mm -hmm. or be at a remote location where you can see what's happening. But what this will do is ha they will assign somebody to be observing the traffic pattern mm -hmm. that develops during the holidays and be able to change, adjust the signals to facilitate traffic. So that's what these guys will be doing? Correct. Okay, so they'll, they'll kind of flip the, the, the signal lights to go X, Y, or Z, north, east, south, or whatever, whatever, depending Correct. upon how the crowd will be flowing. Right. Uh, longer lights lasting for extended <coughs> periods of time based on the traffic being back all the way up down Chapel Hill or something like that. Correct. Oh, interesting. Okay. and. Uh, do we have access to this kind of stuff? Let's say, do the, the sheriff and uh, the city of police have, have access to this? Because I know I've seen them out normally directing traffic versus actually kind of being at the computer saying, oh, it looks like there's more traffic coming down Douglas Boulevard than it is coming up, you know, so we can kind of switch that out. So we don't have access to that, though? Not that I know of, but the city historically, because uh, you know, they station people at certain strategic locations throughout the right, holidays. Right, so, so actually just do the, the doing the traffic. This will actually eliminate that type of work. Am I correct or not? Well, you, you complement that type of work. Oh, compliment. Okay. That's a nice one. I like that. <laughs> That's beautiful. 
Okay, so you know, I thought maybe this would be the one that can take that off. So now he or she can kind of go and do some 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 real work. Well, just trying to direct traffic. It, it it can because the officer would be needed when the problems develop, and if we can solve them by way of the transportation center uh, right. remotely, That's then they will not need to be out there. And, and this is only the, for doing the holiday, I guess. And when, what is that time frame like from November Thanks, 1? Thanks, oh, Thanksgiving holiday, Friday, Christmas holiday into New Year. Okay, help me, I, 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 still too much for me. Okay, so <clears> you're saying- The end say, of November, like the last, the third week, beginning the third week in November. Okay. And then, to cover Thanksgiving. Thank covering Thanksgiving Black Friday, but that's normally a huge mm -hmm. and then going into Christmas somewhere there. Into Christmas. Christmas. Mm -hmm. All the way into Christmas or outside of Christmas or past Christmas into the New Year. Got it. And, and this will cover that length of time for these guys to, to monitor that. That is correct. And that will complement your officers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you. A question for you, Dr. McGill. Can this information be used to kind of forecast going forward for the holidays? <coughs> for the next yes. year, for 2020? Yes, it can. Unfortunately, what, what we can project is that we will have as much traffic and then some as we have this year. Mm -hmm. and, and so we can develop a, a, a different timing pattern mm -hmm. at the intersections but it has to be fine-tuned to specific time periods. That is, that is what is significant about this, because if you could be at the intersection observing traffic and be able to manipulate the timing, that would be the most preferred. But that takes staff time, and you have to predict when you're going to be needed. What this does is it recognizes that Traffic patterns will change as we get into the shopping season. We're going to have more traffic headed for the mall from both ends of Douglas Boulevard. And so there's going to need to be adjustments made to the traffic signal, the green times facing in each direction. And so it's so they would provide the personnel to monitor what is happening out there so that they can make adjustments on the fly. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Geiger. Yes. Um, who is Mr. Hayden? Hayden worked for <coughs> us. Uh, he's no longer with the county. Okay, what was his job? He was uh, the traffic operations manager. Okay, so that job, has it been filled? <coughs> yes. Okay, so they can't manage traffic? <laughs> what well, do they do? Well, the, the, they can and they do during the day, but the issue becomes the, the peak shopping times are in the evening, and so you need to have additional personnel monitoring this that are able, qualified, to make the adjustments at the signal. It, it, uh, <coughs> if you have some, someone adjust the traffic at the signal <coughs> and there's an accident, and somebody were to then come back and say, well, who, who changed whatever? You need to be sure, we need to be sure, that whoever goes in and makes adjustments is well qualified to do that so that there's no exposure to the county. Okay, uh, I think the chairman can uh, validate what I'm about to say about the light there at Douglas Boulevard and Highway 5. It gets backed up, and it, it'll let three or four cars. We had to wait through about three red lights before we could go through that intersection one day. So, who's managing that? Uh, this they were, person. <laughs> they uh, this outfit would be monitoring during the, during those time periods. Now we monitor during the day, and if we have this any, was during the day. Okay, a business day. Okay. If it is a business day, then we have the ability to monitor the traffic at the, our control center. They would be monitoring during the evening, on the weekend. They do. They do. This outfit, Wilburn Engineering, they would have staff that would be monitoring traffic during those time periods. 
I'm just saying, if someone's supposed to be monitoring that sub that uh, intersection, they're not doing a good job. I get more complaints about how the red lights are not synced, <coughs> and how the um, on Saturdays it is not unusual for the traffic to back back up down Highway Five all the way to about Chick Fil A, and that who's monitoring that? The state has a team that monitors corridors, and they have a team that monitors Highway 5. <coughs> Part of the issue with Highway 5 is one of capacity. It, it, there's not enough lanes to handle all the volume, and there aren't enough turn lanes to get the traffic off Highway 5. So the project that we have ongoing under construction southbound... It's going to speed up the side. It's going to speed up that, and then the right turn lane and Boulevard will help with that, mm -hmm. but it, it's just a matter of volume and capacity. Of well, and, and on, on Saturdays and um, certain times of the day, down uh, Douglas Boulevard uh -huh. goes all the way down to Home Depot, but there is not letting that traffic go through, and it's not letting the traffic come uh, from the other direction either. It's not right, and we've com I've complained about it for several years now. And it, um, Highway 5 is emptying out northbound a lot faster, which is, no, southbound, I'm sorry, southbound, but then the <coughs> southbound is not emptying out. And uh, I don't mind paying somebody for their cr credentials if they're doing the job. But I can't see any improvement in the signal at that intersection. I can't speak for everybody else's uh, uh, intersections, but <coughs> I, know, I hear more complaints about that intersection. And I've, here lately I've gotten a lot of complaints about Central Church Road because it holds the traffic for so long. And, um, you know, if we're going to pay somebody to have these credentials, then they need to be doing their job. And I, I don't know the person. I knew Mr. Hayden because he gave me his business card because I wanted to call him when there was a problem at that intersection. But um, I don't see any, any improvement. Why do we have the position if they're not going to improve some of the signals? Yeah, uh, to, to your issue, Commissioner, uh, one of the <coughs> outcomes of having somebody actually be able to adjust the signals during the evenings and on the weekends is that if we didn't do that, the traffic that you observed would be even worse. They're actually not <laughs> resolving the issue fully, but they are making it better than it otherwise would be. Well, I can't imagine it being any worse. And people are just pulling out every which way. And there's sometimes you just hold your breath to turn or whatever or go through it, that intersection. They go through the intersection when it's already turned red because they get so frustrated with waiting so long. So uh, you need to talk to whoever's in charge of that. Thank you. I yield back. Uh, Director Valentine, if you could, is uh, I'd like to see just if you could employ um, as your uh, see what you can do to have someone come in on the weekend from the staff just so they can time it. I guess those experts so they can take a look at the complaints and then uh, just monitor our guests and just give us an idea if we're correct or incorrect. Or just if we can then if you could just provide an update to the board in two weeks. Can you have someone come sure. in on the weekend and look at it? And, and those <coughs> pressure points that we just mentioned, Highway 5, Chapel Hill, and what other, what was the other area for the commissioners, any other area? Uh, I just believe that's well, the I pressure get, point. I get complaints on uh, Central Church Road. Uh, it holding the traffic on the uh, artillery Those uh, roads, arterials. And, you know, Central Church Road mm -hmm. so much longer, and there'll be no traffic going down Highway 5 and everybody's lined up. <laughs> on both sides of the <coughs> red light on Central Church Road. So uh, I think it needed the timing's off. Yeah. And it's worked all the time to bring somebody in and just look at it. We've been complaining a while that they can just put, you know, just 
Let's put an eye on it for us and then report back in two weeks. All right, we'll move on to the next item, which is tab number is 18, Lisa? It is I'm sorry, 20, 28. No, 20. No, we're finished with 25, 26. 26. Authorization to allocate an additional <coughs> 1.3 million from the 2016 splash funds for the county to manage construction of the Lee Road widening phase two project and to, con and to contract for construction administration inspections and testing services required during the construction of the project and authorize the children to sign all related documents. <coughs> Yes, Madam Chair, uh, this is in connection with the Lee Road project that we're packaging to advertise, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in late May, early June of next year. Uh, when we were having discussions with the Georgia DOT about being able to deliver the project in 2020, we're starting uh, the construction in 2020, uh, they <coughs> indicated to us that they would require all of the <coughs> funding if, if, if the DOT was to manage the contract. They were going to require all of the funding from the county, the county's match, the funding required for inspections, and the 20% uh, contingency that's usually applied <coughs> to the bid. Uh, they would want all of that money up front. Uh, one check, or presumably one check, uh, to the tune of seventeen and a half million dollars. Obviously, in discussions uh, at the committee, uh, transportation committee, and, and elsewhere, it, it became pretty obvious that the county, from a cash flow standpoint, was would not be able to come up with seventeen and a half million dollars uh, at one time like that, unless other projects were relegated to a different timeline. Uh, as part of the consideration for the county to manage the project, uh, then we would need to be able to provide our match as we go, uh, and we would need to hire someone to administer the construction and do the inspections and the testing. All federal projects require a, a certain set regimen of inspections and testing and uh, certification at the end of the project that all of that has been done properly. And so what, what this would require, based on, uh, on the uh, <coughs> estimate from GDOT, they indicated they uh, would need $1.9 million for this element. Uh, we intend to do some of the work in-house in terms of the management and the tracking and the oversight. And so we think that for $1.3 million, we should be able to do all of the inspections, testing, certification required <coughs> for us to manage the project. And uh, that's why we're asking for this allocation so that we could have the match for the construction and the ability to have the inspections, testing, and administration uh, by a consultant. Any questions from the board? Commissioner Dyer. Uh, what category is the 1.3 million coming from? Roads? Uh, resurfacing? What? What, uh, what we discussed uh, at the Transportation Committee was that uh, uh, half of it would come from economic development and the other half would come from the residual funds from the Post Road Bridge. <coughs> So we've taken pretty, pretty much of the $10 million set aside for economic development for just Lee Road. My understanding, if, if I remember correctly, there is still a residual in economic <coughs> development of a little over $2 million. No, it's not $2 million. Mm -hmm. You told me it was less than $2 million. There's $2 million it was at one point. At least that was the numbers that, that I was given. But the recent numbers <coughs> from Terry, um, there's $2,148,000 in um, economic development. So uh, we didn't pin that amount. <laughs> for something that's pending. There was some stuff that had been discussed but it hadn't gone to the Board of Commissioners yet. It's so, in Well, that's why it's, it is today. I mean, 
<clears throat> so that's going to prohibit another project. Well, right now there's there's technically nothing that's tied to that two million one hundred forty eight thousand. Okay, I go back. Okay, thank you. Now there are things that are tied to the post road bridge money that's been discussed for and they're on the list. Seems to me like they'd have to go under bridges or something like that. Well, that's up to the board. Based on what's been set up, um, <coughs> the transportation gets 51% and the board can decide where they want that money to go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that'd be up to the board. Okay, I go back. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, I, again, this is a, a, a priority that prior administration, current administration, all embrace as being important. The one thing I, I am, I did get some feedback on, uh, is that when we asked what the number was going to be, we did that move that <coughs> to the Anuiki, um area because it was less of a priority. You can change your priorities, uh, and. Um, Obviously, Thornton Road. I would have liked to have had you no know, again knowing your numbers, having a tighter forecast. Because I would like to know when we went in, Commissioner, <coughs> don't nickel and dime. Tell me the number. We could have got all twelve three at one time versus just like that. That, that we we have to do better. Right. That that was my point. Like okay. Where's this come from? We thought we already made this decision to be done with this. So I put that to my peers, like, no, I did that one right there. So this is to staff. You, you, come on, do better. You got to do better on your forecast. You get, get all that experience. But when I find myself in a moment where people just throwing stuff at like this appetite, like, okay, it's no or pause or you can't have it both ways. But I'm going to trust your analysis. Then you must show me that you're going to be consistent with your analysis. <coughs> Right, so that's what this was really about, like, gosh, million three. Now, as it relates to economic development, again, that $10 million was originally designed for Thorn Road. Go back to, that was all about the Fox Hall. Let's not forget history. Why that was given up, <coughs> I always should be at that time, the majority. We'll put this over there in that area. This board, over time, just decided to do it a little bit differently. You got big appetite. And where are we going to get the biggest bang for our buck? I think Miguel's recommendation work with um, obviously with the master plan that did require a contribution from um, obviously the partners that are up there to do their part and our part to build that road eventually to help with that <coughs> you got congestion all over the place but as opposed to having it concentrated perhaps in maybe just one area this this obviously helps um, three commission districts per se and so it, it, it made sense but um, I, I do this one thing uh, we got to do better with numbers when you're making us when you're asking us, this, everybody, when you're asking us to make adjustments, don't come back two, three times. Get the numbers right. Jennifer knows my, my, my give me the number, be consistent. You know, and, we, and so that's where we can't, and this is my only point, go back to original SPLOS, go back to internal testing. <coughs> you took internal testing out of the SPLOS in our moral agreement. We're paying these guys $4 million off the top. We're going to do it in-house. We've had that argument. I'm like, okay. This is back to the David Goodhead. We can bring somebody, all this, go back. You know, so this, there's, a, there's more to this that says, okay, it, it moves around. We look at staff, to, to your point earlier, we're looking at staff. We're looking at how to execute. We're looking at how to implement. We're looking at how, they, how, how the money moves. Look at the process. It's like, okay, guys, look what you're putting the board commissioners in, in a place where, okay, enough. Now, we heard you guys that we could do it all in-house. We can, we can save money. We, 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 can, we, we took internal testing out of We could have had this done off the top, done. Now we're bringing, we said we could do it in house. Now we can't do it. Now we got to go refund it out. Like, <coughs> why'd y'all do it that way? So sometimes you ask the question, why we choose to pause or try? Sometimes we have to push back on staff because, again, it's an uncomfortableness about the approach. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. My job is to check and to balance. Now, you guys are doing a good job, and I appreciate that we're getting better. But um, you, you don't have to accept anything as is, point blank, like, no. You know, I was paying attention to how this was going down. And you got to remember to bring it back around, like, okay, now where were we again about this testing? We could have baked this in on the front side. To, to, to your point, we wouldn't have to compromise this. This could have been in that contract. 
right? We chose about well, we can do it in house. We can do it in house. No, you can't. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the. You, it, it, and that's my part. Sometimes is that we want to do everything. Give us all the money that we can do it all. No, you can't. And that's up to us to say no or to do it differently. Like no, I'm not comfortable with that approach. And that's our liberty and our right to do so. Uh, to take it in a different direction. So. Okay, tab number 27, authorization to award a task order in the amount of $145,393 to Peak Pavement Market LLC to install paving markings on various county roads per the attached list in accordance with the on-demand contract to be funded from the approved 2019 DLT budget and authorize the chairman to sign related documents. I believe this Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, this item is related to the second round of LMIG funding that was awarded to the county for striping. Mm -hmm. uh, so item 27, 28, and 29 are related to that $210,000 grant that GDOT awarded. Uh, it was split uh, 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 with three different contracts uh, totaling that, that amount so that uh, we could have uh, different areas address at the same time we can get the project done uh, quicker. Also, having the ability to have, uh, if one contractor is not performing well, to be able to go to another one to get the work done. Okay, any questions? We'll move on to tab 28, authorization to award a contract, uh, award a task order in the amount of $94,535 to Highway Services Incorporation to install pavement markings on various county roads per the attached list in accordance with the on-demand on contract to be funded by GDOT uh, LMEG grant with a 30% local match from the 2016 SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Again, Director Valentin. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. This, this is uh, the second contract of the three. Uh, it is part of the same uh, overall uh, project. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, similar circumstances, just part of it being done by a different contract. Okay. Any questions for the uh, Commissioner Carthen? Okay, can you explain to me why the first contract we were doing nine miles is 145,000, but the second one where we're only doing four miles is 94,000? Is there a... <laughs> it, it depends on a number of factors. Um, the width of the road, <coughs> the number of intersections that we have to do, the amount of what we refer to as handwork at intersections. Um, whenever you have a road where the bulk of the work is long lines, center lines and edge lines, that is done by a truck. And so it goes quicker and you can do many more miles. Whenever you have a lot of intersections or crosswalks and the like, that has to be done by a different crew, uh, is done with, not by a large truck, but by a smaller piece of equipment. And so it's more labor intensive and requires more striping at, at each location. Therefore, it's not an apples to apples comparison. Okay, All right. thank you, I yield. <laughs> okay, one, one quick question. question. I had to meet representative uh, Gravely and some uh, residents of High Point Road the other day, and I was when I was going out there, the side line was not placed out there. There was a center line. I think that's the road that I I remember seeing. There was just a center line, but there was no side lines. Uh, is that? Coming what? Because it's very. I will. Track. I will look into that, Commissioner. That is a separate contract uh, altogether. That was part of the resurfacing contract, the splash resurfacing and the Elmig resurfacing. Uh, the the center line, obviously, uh, they have to replace because that you need that in every road. The edge line, if there was an edge line there before, then they would have to come back and restrike that. Two different colors would be done by two different crews, two different trucks. Um, but I'll look into it to see. Okay, it was either South Flat Rock or uh, Gold Road. Yeah. I can't remember which one. But <coughs> I, I'll look into it and follow up, make sure that they're putting back what, what they're supposed to do. Okay. If there was an edge line there, then they're, 
they're going to be putting back. Thank you. I'll you back. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Okay. So we'll move on to your last item. Uh, Director Valentin is tap number 29 authorization to award a task order to Roadside Specialties Incorporation in the amount of $205,668 to install pavement markers on various county roads for the attached list in accordance with their on-demand on contract to be funded by a G.L. Med grant with a 30% local match from the 2016 SPLOST funds and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Miguel. Thank you, Madam Chair. This, this is the, the third item, uh, part of the same contract. Again, we split it up amongst three different contractors to, to be able to get the project done quicker and to have a backup in case one of them is not performing up to our standard. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right, I just have one question with the striping uh, of their uh, weather um, temperature um, limitations with the weather. So anything below 50, is that the same that, thing? That is correct. You, oh, okay. You're starting to get technical on me, Madam yeah. Chair. But yes, uh, <laughs> we do have to monitor the temperature and uh, particularly the thermoplastic. Uh, they, they like to see uh, 50 degrees and above. Okay, and then also just, uh, just as a reminder, just, um, just want to remind you about the evidence-based study for those lights that we just talked about this Douglas and Chapel Hill. And we'll consider that evidence-based because they're going to go out and get us some document documents and hopefully they can adjust the lights at that time if they find the problem. Can that be done on real time <coughs> when they go out? That that quarter because because they have a an, a consulting firm, GDA has a consulting firm monitoring that corridor. Mm -hmm. They they study and they do traffic counts and they observe the intersections and they make adjustments so what what i would be doing is reaching out to them and and making sure what the latest uh, study or analysis has been if they haven't done one recently for them to go back out mm -hmm. and and give give us the results and then i'll bring that back to the board i i would try to rely on them uh, because again they're they have a consultant working uh, that quarter uh, to get the information and bring it back to you. <coughs> okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Director Valentine. We'll move on to tab number 30, authorization to advertise for a public hearing to create a new ordinance regarding disorderly conduct at the request of the Solicitor General, uh, Attorney Bernard. And Madam Chair, this thing is a work in progress. All we're asking for today, tomorrow is a vote to allow us to advertise it for public hearing, which would be sometime in December the first uh, voting meeting in December. Mm -hmm. The whole intent behind this is the solicitor came to me um, and it's not to create new crimes in Douglas County, but they needed a fallback position for certain crimes where the cities have disorderly conduct uh, ordinances and we did not have one. So this is entirely new to Douglas County. Uh, I will tell you, I've had input or <coughs> conversation both with uh, Sheriff Pounds this morning and his staff before today I've had a conversation with the state court judges and there's collaboration going on, so there'll be some revisions to this, but one of the issues primarily among others is the state law on testing uh, uh, less than an ounce of marijuana, a misdemeanor offense, has changed and as a result of that change, there is a scientific problem with determining whether or not a proposed <coughs> cigarette butt is marijuana, uh, THC, or whether it's hemp. And so there, what the goal, I think, the uh, and the solicitor's gonna come to the December May. I told you she didn't have to come wait through this just because we're advertised for public hearing. The goal, I think, for her is on some cases where uh, there's a chance to, to resolve the case where to let them hang out indefinitely is to reduce it to the lesser included of disorderly conduct. Having said that, there is a law called the rule of leniency, and the rule of leniency is causing us to have a conversation with the sheriff and the uh, judges and the uh, prosecutors because you don't want to interfere with <coughs> other crimes, including other felonies, where there's an ordinance that is the substitute because under rule of leniency, you're supposed to charge the least uh, available crime. So we're it's a work in progress. What I'd like y'all to do is it comes to y'all at the request of the Solicitor General. What I'd like y'all to do is let us advertise for public hearing. Mm -hmm. I will tell you because our publication requirements 
uh, it will be December, the first meeting in December before it would actually be uh, considered. <coughs> and by then we will work out some more details as to what we're really after, considering all the players that are involved, okay? Okay, sounds good. All right, any questions from the board? Okay, we'll move on to tab number 31, authorization to <coughs> approve a mem memorandum of agreement with the Douglas County Chamber of Commerce to expend hotel motel tax funds through December 31st, 2019, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Attorney Bernard. Yes, Madam Chair, 31 and 32 go together, so I'm going to talk about them at the same time. They're okay. virtually overlap. Okay. Uh, 30, uh, and by the way, Sarah is, have, is here from the chamber. We appreciate you being here, and, and her, her board, and I will disclose for public purposes, I'm on that board, although I abstain from their vote on this. Uh, she's here. We had a meeting, uh, the vice chair, uh, the county administrator, uh, the chamber of commerce, the development authority, and other players related to this. Uh, as you remember, DCA passed a rule or has a rule that certain funds of the hotel motel tax have to be passed through a 501c6 in order to be expensed for certain tourism products and other products under that category. There's only one 501c6 in, in town, it's the Chamber of Commerce. Originally, y'all had an agreement, which is number 32, with the Development Authority, uh, a program of work back that y'all uh, entered into in December of 18. It was about $170,000 and some change with a program of work behind it, obviously with input from Colin Cash, uh, our person from the county. In August of that year, I want to say, y'all amended it to increase the number of things that were going to run through the pipeline. The purpose of 31 and 32 is to shift that am amendment to, the proper, to a proper entity, that is the Chamber of Commerce, who's agreed to expense that amount of money. And if you look at uh, 31, if you look at the second thing, not the actual MOU, but your program will work. Uh, which includes the five pillars that the state recognizes. The items in YOLA are adjustments because there is a $5,000 a $5, administrative fee to the chamber. They're not trying to make money. They're trying to help us out until we can get our own 501c6 started, which you can see in their item, item 33 later. So that's for their accounting maneuver, but this is what they're implementing. Y'all have already approved everything on here except for the $5,000 expense. The items in red have already been expended, and I know that the $25,000 that was added to this program uh, at the request of Commissioner Carthon will be spent through the chamber before December 31 of 2019. DCA requires that hotel motel tax funds to run through that entity, why, I don't know, like 501c6. And the Chamber's agreement ends on December 31st of 19, unless our 501c6 is not, uh, rep it'll be organized, but it will not probably have the IRS designation yet. If it doesn't, the Chamber's agreement continues quarter to quarter until we get our 501c6 in place. But any expenditures would have to be worked out between this body and the chamber as far as new program work, et cetera. Et cetera. So 31 and 32 are really, we're ending the amendment, and, it, and Chris and the Development Authority in agreeing with this. We're terminating the amendment that required this expenditure to 399.7, minus the 70 that has already been expended. We're shifting that to be handled by the Chamber of Commerce through the end of the year. The Chamber of Commerce will be our backup 501c6 for in quarter to quarter until we terminate because our 501c6 that we're formulating has been approved by the IRS. Remember, it's a two-step process. We can get y'all organized. We can get you incorporated as a nonprofit, but you're not technically a nonprofit until the IRS designated. And I'll talk about that in item 33. There is no new expenditure. I want to point that out. There's a shifting of that amendment from the Development Authority, which is not a 501c6, to an entity that is a 501c6, the Chamber of Commerce. And so those items 31 and 32, you can read together. We're terminating the amendment. The, the Douglas County Development Authority will spend out pursuant to the December 18 original agreement, which is the 170 uh, something number. I can't remember exactly where it is. 
Go ahead and say it loud. $170,050. they are going to spend that out. Many of that is already under the come, and they've actually incurred the expense and just had not been reimbursed yet. But they're in agreement with both of these, and I will tell you, and Sarah, I don't want to speak for the chamber because I would have a conflict with you. I think your board has hired an independent lawyer for me Correct. to look at this, and your board has blessed this without my vote. So, Madam Chair, that's items 31 and 32 taken as a whole. Okay. Any questions from the board? I'll come. Vice General Robinson. Yeah, I, I, I do appreciate this 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 effort. Um, the, um, the meeting that um, Ken mentioned that I was a part of was a derivative from uh, a works, uh, excuse me, an executive session with the full board of commissioners mm -hmm. where this issue came up. And the issue was about the extra $400,000 that had been aggregated, not the ongoing operations, is simply how are we going to spend this four hundred thousand? All right. So we went out of executive session and we brought it before the finance committee, which was some, somewhat <coughs> important and mentioned. That's important. Um, it was stated um, as, as part of that, and, and, and again, the goal of all of this is to make sure that there were back to objectives that Commissioner Major that we were supposed to be inclusive. Right? When Madam Carthen said mentioned that twenty five thousand dollar marketing plan it was just all she was focused on was like we want to can we include somebody else as part of this it started with that one thread pool this whole thing fell apart when we got in here and peeled this onion it's like oh my god why are y'all running money through economic development this way wait a minute how you got a staff member over here like what we can't we, we can't just walk through this one much more at stake at this like no uh -uh. that that was like oh man y'all got development authority paying somebody that's our staff member that's not connected to a tourism committee like they supposed to that one's not a 50c6 but we've been historically doing it that way so there's a lot of like um, history here a lot of um, I'm gonna say I won't say it's illegal but let's just say bad practices it never lined up now it's not like we were not aware of this for probably about a year Right, and I appreciate um, our attorney's effort to try to clean this up. But also during this whole process, which really bothered me, it was sort of this, 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 this disbelief that, well, we don't want to do it that way. We don't want to be told to do something a certain way. And I, and I, I, I took great offense because there was really no acknowledgement of the fact of what we were trying to accomplish. There was not a focus on minorities properly. From a tourism perspective, the whole point of the marketing plan that we looked at and got pushback from is that it wasn't acknowledged. Now, when we went through this whole process, we realized that there were five <coughs> pillars, and while everybody's acting like well, we don't want to do it that way, it's like y'all are not even adhering to what the state told you you were supposed to be. So we're just holding you accountable to what the state said you should be doing as a pillar, attracting black tourism. All right, so that was so it was sort of like oh, okay. So what started about $25,000 became about $400,000. Like, look, why don't we just give it, why don't we open up an RFQ? Why don't we just open it up? I mean, just like this earlier, you're, you're pointing it to Georgia Power and Greystone, and you're breaking that up and spreading the love. Why, can't, why, why do we have to reconcentrate money back to the chamber? Now, the chamber's already getting an award from hotel and motel tax. So I'm like, well, why am I going to give them $400,000? <coughs> when when, when I, I, I'm, I haven't heard... You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm like, well, where is Colin going to report now? Like, now how are they going to do this? And so this is a pass through. So this is one of those guys. Y'all need to think about this. You don't get them four hundred thousand dollars. Now, what I had a problem with when we said um, I heard is that we're going to give them a marketing fee or, or whatever. Just like, well, you about to become our broker? You really going to do what I say? Think about it. why you going to give them a fee? They go like, why y'all going to pay them a fee? You're giving them four hundred thousand. So on this one, this one's not that, I can't just, I, I think we need to think about this one. I understand the time. But you guys are just not hearing this. My peers, y'all haven't heard this. I've been involved in these meetings. I've been like, okay, okay, y'all need to fill, fill this pretty. They were trying to push this through finance committee through an administrative concurrence, and I had to reject it. I mean, it was like, oh, no, y'all don't. I mean, it was such a fastball. It's like, oh, no, I've been swinging a long time. And I, I know there was some commentary that came out, and it, and it was no, no, no offense to, to Colin. Um, and I think that's important, Jennifer um, Hallman. It, it, that wasn't what it was about. It's how y'all went about trying to move this and keep this money contained. It's like, no. Uh-uh. 
I can't be complicit with this. So for this one, I said, we, we need to really, y'all need to look at what they're saying. That's all I can say. I don't know if we're ready to vote on this tomorrow, but y'all need to look at what they're saying with this. This thing, just to, this is more, this is like, I don't know. But I get the chamber, y'all shouldn't even be in this place. So I think I said this to Sarah before, like in Howard Ray, y'all shouldn't even be in this place. This is the Board of Commissioners issue, not the chambers, not economic development. You guys created this, um, this, this, this dysfunction, and, and now here we are. And so it's just one of those, where, yeah, we got to 1231. It's not that hard. You're like, they can, it, 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 it's okay. But y'all need to think through this one. I don't know if you're ready to vote like this. You're going to dissolve one relationship just that easy. Well, why would we do that? I mean, it was just sort of, it's all about moving money. And I, I still need assurances that, no, go back to what we're looking to do. I haven't heard that says, okay, but how are you going to market to attract and, and fulfill those pillars? Um, I, I, I need y'all need to hear it. I need to see it. It ain't just say it offline in some side meetings. Just like no, I want to see it publicly. Say it. If you can't say it publicly, then I, I don't want to do the nod. I don't want to do the implied. I'm, 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 I'm not in that room. I, I can't do that. Because all we started with was about twenty-five thousand dollars. Now you made a four hundred thousand dollar bully, and that was the that was the, the the insult of this whole process. Is like really, guys. And, I, and I, I really, it was just sort of the, okay, let, me, let us get out your way then. Okay. We'll see you later. So, Paul, I, I'm going to yield on this. That's all I've got to say. I'm not ready to vote. I mean, as, as, as Senator James would say, I'm, I'm unsettled. I, I think you guys really need to look at what's here. Not saying that you didn't do your homework over the weekend. I get it. A lot of items. Really think about what, 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 what this is. No offense to my chamber. No offense to, we shouldn't even be here. Had a great time with Chamber in Washington, D.C. Great. Great experience, but I'll, I'll leave with this. With two points, Sarah was so so kind to walk me through the National Museum of African American History, and we're walking through two different generations, walking through this this thing in two different perspectives. Right? It was just a great moment to walk through that place, and there's a, there was a sensitivity that in my mind, it, it, it's this awareness. It says that, okay, if you're going to attract, you got to understand and, and recognize the experience. You got to get it. It can't be symbolic that we just go spend some money in a, in a magazine, a jet, ma that, that ain't enough. Right? It, 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 I, and what I want is, I don't just want y'all to go spend 400. Do it right. Show us that how y'all gonna fulfill that pillar. And that was the only thing, it's like, okay, but are y'all listening? I know you hear me, but are you listening? And that, it, it's just right there, are you listening? Again, I can, County Minister, appreciate all your effort. Y'all know this is, is how I would say, yeah, there's an elephant in the room. I got it. I get it. And I don't want them to be in that place. And that's why I said, okay, bring this back to the full board. Take those guys. This has nothing to do with them. They're trying to accommodate us, but we don't want to compromise their charter and their vote. Hey, look, we're over here doing chamber stuff. Like, okay, we help y'all, but, I mean, we really don't, you know, I, I know y'all work just to try to help us, but it's like, we should, no. Perhaps there's another firm, something else that we can do this differently. I don't know, go partner with somebody else. But I, I, I think to, to avoid the obvious, which is, I don't want to, I don't want to put pressure on. Like, no, I'm not bending on this one, my vote, and I, I don't want to put them in that place because we got such a great relationship with both those agencies. But, but we, we could do better. So, Madam Chair, I think I can address a few of. Uh, Commissioner Robinson's questions, I can't. I have no questions. Uh, well, a, no a few questions. Of things that were raised. Let me just say this: the agreement, y'all's employee, y'all pay for Colin, so Colin will be the one implementing the program that y'all have already blessed. The attachment will be the MO, the uh, the document that's a, that y'all have already approved the expenditure and what the categories are. So y'all have approved the program of work. The the actual Greenwood Chamber says the following. The employee's operating budget, which is called, shall be used for the items listed in Exhibit A, which is y'all's pre-approved 399 something spend minus the 70 that's already been paid for. It is explicitly understood and agreed that the funds paid to the chamber are being used to support and further Georgia Department of Economic Development, which focuses on five pillars. These pillars are African American heritage and culture, film and music, outdoor recreation and sports, food, drink, and Georgia grown, and iconic Georgia destinations. 
the county may review and audit expenditures to ensure compliance with 4813.51. My only concern about anything is this money's got to be spent before December 31, 2019, <coughs> or you may not be able to collect future hotel motel tax <coughs> in that category because of the lack of spend. The $5,000 that the chamber has asked for their board is because they've got to open a separate checking account to as fiduciaries to account for this money and they need money to be able to audit those funds separately to maintain their IRS status as a 501c6. So we're walking a fine line between trying to just get there, just get across the line the best way we can <coughs> going, but I don't know all the history. I don't know. I, I don't many governments have been spending this hotel motel tax in non 501c6 forms for a long time and suddenly it's on the radar but uh, I'm not sure that the chamber is going to agree to change much and I will tell you the, the development authority portion they just want to be able to get paid for what they've already expensed ahead of time which is part of the 170 number that's also being attached that y'all have already approved so I don't think either entity is using a lot of discretion. Their, their discretion is the parameters that you've given Colin to bring to the table, essentially, if that makes sense. But I, I get it. I understand what's being said. I just don't know from a legal perspective I can cross you over the line with somebody on the other side that's going to agree to anything else. Uh, but that's where we are. Okay. Also, these uh, pillars, how many pillars? Is it five. 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 Um, just going forward, I know we. We're on the one year line. We have to go back. Okay. We have to take a recess for the emergency. Uh, uh, well, the commissioners take a brief recess. We have an emergency. We will resume our meeting. We had an emergency. Um, in the building and we all had to evacuate and we are back so for those who are viewing we apologize for the delay in our meeting we were discussing and i was saying as the alarm came on for 31 and 32 uh, vice chairman i was just mentioning i know you asked i know we're definitely against up against the timeline and i want to look at these two and, and just would like to put it on the agenda tomorrow and move forward with them. However, with two things, I realized, and I was asking about pillars, there's five pillars. And going forward with the, uh, for the future years, we'd like to see a percentage placed on those uh, pillars as we, uh, as Colin build her list, and that would allow it to be balanced with, between those pillars. I believe one is related to African American culture, and what was the other? African American heritage and culture, film and music, outdoor recreation and sports, food, drink, and Georgia grown, and, so uh, and iconic good. Georgia destinations. Well, maybe 20 percent, uh, 20 times five is 100 percent. 20 percent going toward each in terms of categories and dollars. Of that would that be something that would suffice going forward? Because we're just on the one yard line, and we need it. Need it. Yeah. Getting yeah, it's questions. two separate things. I mean, there's plenty of firms out there that can move this pretty fast, right? That it, it's not about the spend. It's not about professionals mm -hmm. that are out there that can actually pull this off. Uh, I want to clarify two things. This didn't start in 18 like was early. It's actually based on some research that was given to us by our finance. Really about probably um, that um, it, um, the last budget prior to you taking over, Madam Chair, when this really started when this was restructured and stuff. So let's, let's make sure we clarify where this started, that it's just been being maintained. But there's two separate things. There's ongoing operations, which I have no problem how y'all handle. And then there's this aggregate 400,000, which is a one-time thing. Let's not confuse what this is about. This was about the 400,000 that had been aggregated up, whatever, 15 to 18 that had not been spent. That needs to be taken care of. I'm talking, we're focused on that. This speaks to ongoing operations, which is the money that's currently the current budget for 19, the budget y'all are working on right now. That's fine. Work that out. Right? So tourism is currently, meaning college, is currently getting the current budget. The chamber has its budget as it relates to hotel motel tax. Right? So we're talking about this aggregate 400000 And so I'm saying, well, I have no problem with the four hundred. 
is not part of this conversation, I'm fine. So if you want to put this on the agenda tomorrow, I'm fine as is, as long as the 400,000 is done separately with a separate group of separate consideration. That's, that's really my issue. And that's how this is being done. It's like, wait a minute, guys, well, you, you're mixing the two. You're not acknowledging that there's two different cash flows. You're trying to make one solution solve everything. And it's like, no, that's, that's not what this was about. So um, that would be my only comment. I'm open to everybody else. But I'm fine with tomorrow for existing operations, but this 400 gets carved off in a separate solution. Okay. You heal? Yeah. Commissioner Carlton, I believe you can come in. Okay, so I don't want to sound like I'm confused, but I am a little. One, if we don't have our own 501c6 to run this through, then why are we using another and then paying them a fee on top of that? Why not just use what we have until we get our own? That way we're not duplicating stuff and getting rid of money that we could be using towards tourism. It kind of defeats the purpose of why Ken is doing what he's doing. So to me, it just makes more sense. Keep it like it is. If it's with the development authority, allow it to stay with the development authority. We get a 501c6 and then the tourism team does what they need to do. DCA requires it. DCA requires it, yes, and we're working on that. And I thought Ken, I don't want to say what we said in executive session, but he's working on it, so they are working with us until we get it. So why are we <coughs> flipping through all these hoops to do these extra things? One, that's my first comment. Second comment is there are more than one 501c6 in the county. There, there, there are. We just haven't reached out to them. Mm -hmm. um, but. We, we can do better than what we're doing. We, I'll just say we can do better. I'll leave it there. Okay. Yeah. Those are my, I'll be real happy. Yeah. Okay. So of the 399, to sort of help answer your first question, mm -hmm. DCA told us verbally, mm -hmm. spend it, mm -hmm. technically, mm -hmm. but they wouldn't give it to us in line. They told us to spend it. Did they, they say we had to spend it, it through the 501c6? They said, no, they said spend, spend it. Spend it, spend it. Um, she has it outlined, spend it, spend it, but don't go give it to the chamber to spend it. Spend it. As far as the other, we can't find any 501c6s, so if you know of one, mm -hmm. yeah, let me know, because we can't find any. The only one is the chamber that we can yes. find. We did call the uh, Douglasville Convention and Business Bureau. They are set up as a nonprofit, but they could not, the city attorney could not confirm that they received the IRS designation. So we don't know if they're really a 501c6 or if they're just an entity that thinks it's a nonprofit and hasn't got the status. Mm -hmm. That was the two that we were aware of. Got it. I have to see these paperwork. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sounds like you landed in the same spot that Mark and I were talking about earlier. You just spend it, like you just say spend it and then continue it down the path of 50166. So we've been trying to do that all the, time, all the time. So thank you, Commissioner Carson, for reiterating. Yes. Don't we have to spend it by year end, the 400,000? Yeah. Or yeah. have an attempt to. Yeah. But yes. And we, but, so we're running out of time. Right. Okay. We can't just spend it. If we send it to a 501c6, they have to expend it too. They have to expense it. It's not just us turning the money over to a 501c6 by the end of the year. It's them expensing it by the end of the year. Right. Yeah. If, if, if DCA has asked us just to burn the money down and then, of course, going forward with the 501 so C6. C6, yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, let me just say this. I'm fine with y'all doing whatever you want to do with the caveat that I can't tell you the spend is legal when you do it yourself because we have a memo from DCA back in September of 18, apparently, where they have notified finance or notified somebody over here that you're supposed to spend it through a 501c6. And so it might be good to, to ask, you know, ask the finance director what we spend and what we're not. I do think that DCA will say offline, spend it. But what they won't confirm when you spend it, if we audit you and find you didn't spend it in compliance with the law, will we cut you off in the future? That's the unknown risk of us just spending it ourselves. And okay. if y'all, with that caveat, the easiest thing would be for us just to maintain it, spend it, 
but I can't promise you if we get audited later if that's not a problem. I'm along with everybody else, to, uh, 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 others, not everybody else, other people who are currently doing this as well. We're not isolated to ourselves. Yeah, the letter was not to Douglas no, County. Yes, state of Georgia. Yeah, state of Georgia. Everybody got them. Uh, and again, I, I think that it was, it could have been, it's about what's the word cooperation. <coughs> it's like, come on, guys. Right? There's other firms that are out there. Give them a chance. Let them go partner. I mean, so there's two <coughs> things. There's fulfillment of being more inclusive and in who execute this. Get somebody who, just like we have a Hispanic chamber that's being formed, have something that is specific to, but that's not what you do. And if you look at, if we, you know, we're not very good at evaluating ourselves internally as it relates to performance appraisals. Some partners are better than others. But if we really want to evaluate and lay everybody against them five pillars and say, okay, this one right here, I'm looking at the historical spin we haven't passed. It's not only in your consciousness that we're bringing it up, but it's like, okay, well, I don't know if you're going to get this right with a shotgun approach in 30 days with no, no, you, you know, how you going to do this right? It just becomes a spin. So I'm like, okay, if I'm, <coughs> I'm okay with ongoing, we'll let you learn, let you burn how you want to, but on that 400, it needs to be dedicated and specific. It has to be purposeful. It can't just be a spin with a bunch of, um, you know, marketing materials and stuff. You put it's like, no. How are you going to fulfill that one? And that's the part where it was not identified. Yes, there was an original plan that we signed off of. And there was some resistance about it because we were trying to identify a firm <coughs> community to tap into. That was reject or we got resistance from staff for whatever reason. Um, and then now we're bringing it full circle, and it just there has not no plan has been shown on how to fulfill number one. Right, so I'm still waiting for that. Right, there was no plan to get into a little bit more detail. Now, how are you going to do this and you got to spend this that long? Look at you, 400 grand. How are you going to do this? Now, again, we get ongoing operations. Keep the two separate. I'm okay with ongoing operations, but this 400,000, it needs to be specific. So I say table, Madam Chair, to just one more meeting. I just, I don't know if y'all are confused. I'm, I'm not confused, but I've been involved in it. And you guys may have different positions, so I'm not trying to wait y'all. I'm just one vote. Y'all know I respect y'all highly, but you need to look at this. So, Madam Chair, so there is a there is a list that's attached to the MOU for the 399,000 that does have specific items on there. And if we need to change those items, you know, we'd be glad to change them. But that was that was the same list that was approved last time, and then it was revised based on your comment. Yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, so we already approved yeah, it, so we're saying we can devise it to accommodate. Yeah, and if we need to change it, we can. Okay. Is that, how soon can we do that? Change the list? Just tell us what you want on it, and as long as it meets hotel and motel tax um, expenditures, then we can change it. Okay. Um, <coughs> Board of Commissioners, sound like we have some more work to do. Our next meeting is, when is our next meeting, Lisa? December. No. Mm. December. No. December. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. We're not quite there yet. Um, <laughs> She's like, hey, it's the change in this time. Yeah. Today's the fourth, the 18th. November 18th. And today the fourth, tomorrow's the fifth. Tomorrow's the fourth and mom's birthday. That's why I know. So, yeah, 18th. November 18th. Place it on the agenda for November 18th. That'll be our last time discussing, and we need to move forward. Because we do not want those those funds, we vote down. We cannot. Thirty-one and thirty-two. Yeah, and I think thirty-three is going to go with it as well. I believe. Yeah, I believe it. Um, attorney, but no. Madam Chair, uh, Chris Pumphrey came in since the last. Uh, since we, he probably pulled a fire alarm. <laughs> came in. But Chris is here from the Development Authority. The only caveat would be, if there's a revision, they're just not. They're going to have to have it review the okay. chamber and Chris I'm just telling you y'all's your, deadline may not be theirs deadline so you might want to address them while they're here what can they do on their end but and to that point but it, this is where but look what look what the board of commissions are it's sort of like this is your only choice you got a shot I'm like no you're saying we ain't got no time we got to make a decision like no just like everybody should have a chance to consider this and so again, sometimes it's the procedure in which how we do things, guys. It's about these rules and how we move stuff along. And you're trying to force a decision that's like, no. 
I get time, but not based on this. And so it's one of those you got to be comfortable in saying pause for just a minute, at least a meeting, to hear this one out. Again, it is complicated. And again, Chris, you weren't here, but we were acknowledging the fact that both Economic Development and Chamber should not be in this place. You were in the meeting that I was in. I, I don't want there to be offense with any of this. We just, it, again, it's a Board of Commissioner issue uh, that we shouldn't even be here. Um, uh, we, uh, and I want to acknowledge that, yeah, we got something, and I want to take finance off the hook because I think, to, to Collins, um, I think you guys figured this out, what was it, back in May, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. they, uh, they, they actually tried to form um, their own 501c6, and so for some reason I understood that there was a legal pause that says, okay, there's a lot of, you can't do it, but now you're saying, okay, the board can do it, and it's like, okay, see, that's too much. It, it's too much moving around. It's like, and I just sat back and I watched this play. I'm like, okay, guys, what are y'all doing? What, what are you up to that you, you stopped an employee who set out by herself with no board covering, reporting to economic development? Like, why is she over there? Why is he paying her bills? Why is that group over there in their own little world? Why is, it's like, come on guys, look at the dysfunction. <coughs> and so I, I just can't normalize something and, and just sort of go shotgun this solution, which like, no. And again, with great respect to my colleagues um, uh, in those two agencies, this is not about you guys. But I, I won't sit here and have, allow this solution to be shotgun like that. So, mm -hmm. table it. We mentioned it. I mean, Henry. I mean, we have two options on the table. Um, we can run down the cash uh, as DCA has suggested, but will not give us a letter. Or we could, we have the chamber, and then, of course, we may explore another option within this two, two week period, and then we'll go from there. Commissioner Mitchell, what are your thoughts? Do you have any thoughts? I think we can take both ways. Burn down the cash while still going tabling it to, to keep moving. I mean, you don't have to do either or, you can do both. I mean, while, you know, going through the process, we'll, we'll figure that out. And, and by tabling it, just figure out what we want to do. But if, while doing that, if we've got some needs that we want to fulfill, burn down the cash. So we may be down to, I suppose, a 399, it may be down to 250. Who knows by that time frame? So, uh, Unless you guys see otherwise, I'm, I'm not saying not to burn down the cash and wait to, uh, to that time frame, but we can wait and burn it down, or we can burn it down and then, uh, and, and still while tabling, figuring out what, what, what's the next move on. So I'm open for either or, or both. Madam Chair, County um, we do have, well, for item number 32, so we do have um, some of the money on the existing, well, the prior contract we have with the development authority, mm -hmm. where they have already encountered, they have spent money and we need to repay them. And that's the 170, is that one? Yeah, it's the 170, yes. Yeah, so we need to pay them. And that's outside the 399. That's my point. Yeah. You know, ongoing operation, pay your bills. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. While we make it as complicated, pay your bills. If you encourage encouraged so. something, Chris Pumpy out there paying rent and phone bills and everything else and floating her space in his place, Pay the bills. Okay. Pay the bills. That has nothing to do with the 400. One bird, 175 or something. Mm -hmm. well, that's well, not part of the It's not part of the 400. The separate issue on the development authority is that admit, the first agreement was the 170 and some change, which y'all were talking about pay the bills. The amendment from August was this 399 that y'all want to reconsider. Okay. So if you were to go forward on 32, you would be paying the bills that are the 170 from the original contract with the Development Authority. You'd be rescinding the 399 to Development Authority. And then, if, if, in other words, 32 could be separated from 31 as to the amendment mm -hmm. to get the Development Authority out of the way, except for the ongoing expense of the 170 that's their original agreement. You follow me, Chris? Is that what I, I'm? I mean, I just. That's you, fine. It sounds like y'all going to debate the 399 and how it's spent. Those two are severable. Those two, the chamber contract is severable from the <coughs> development authority, but it's not severable if you don't rescind the backside of the develop, development authority's deal, the 399, because it's the same money. Does that make sense? 170, 399, or 400. We've been talking about. Mm -hmm. If you. If you uh, if you fall through with 32, you're going back to the original 170 for the development authority, so they can all spend their money down. Mm -hmm. You're taking the 399 back. You're going to reconsider how you're going to allocate the 399, which is item number 30, uh, 31 with the chamber. But you don't have to do that. I'm just saying that's an option. Table to the board, Yeah. 
We definitely need to uh, pay the bill. Pay the bill. It's just 32, but it just says mutual termination. I'm not sure if we're going to do the termination quite yet. Well, the mutual termination is only of the amendment, Madam Chair. It's yeah. not of the original. It's not of the one said. Okay, Take no action. Okay, well, you just do what you were doing. You, you supposed to pay the bill anyway. Yeah, pay the bills. We have Attorney, you good with that? Okay, the one said. All right, and then also 33, I believe we can entertain that, uh, tab number 33. Kim, yep. you want to move on? Yeah, Madam Chair, you previously approved organizing a, a, a nonprofit 501c6. This tab allows you, after Jennifer Hallman has reached out to the audit people, to get them to do the backside IRS application. We're doing the front side of structure. Uh, we already have a draft in place of the Articles of Incorporation Bylaws and Consent to Appointment of Registered Agent. The initial draft reads like this. I need uh, the audits on structure. The original draft that we have before you to consider has seven. Uh, the Board of Directors shall be composed of seven voting members. Three of the seven voting members shall own or be employed by a business in the Douglas County Hotel sector. Three of the seven members shall own or be employed by businesses in Douglas County attraction sector. One of the seven members shall be a voting member at large, so that's seven. The initial board of directors, which is not the seven, shall consist of the board chair, the county manager, and the director of finance, as a county administrator, director of finance, and two of that board is put in place so we can go through with the application of IRS processes. All appointments. And then what it says is direct, uh, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners shall appoint directors to serve in place of the initial board of directors with the substitute directors having all the powers and authorities conferred upon the initial board of directors. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners shall appoint four additional directors to satisfy the initial remaining vacancies. So that would have, the, you'd have the chairman, you'd have the uh, county administrator, the finance director, and four in, until you stagger their terms and any replacements will be appointed by this body at the recommendation of DCTT, which is the name that we're, Douglas County Travel and Tourism, Inc., I think is the name of it. We don't have to do that. We, we went to Roswell, Inc. to say no, because a lot of suggestions we go model after Roswell. We reached out to their PR person. They could not get us to, you know, when you go online, you can say, here's who the restaurant agent is and here's who the leader is but you can't figure out what the structure is, but you can go on their webpage and see all these faces and what they uh, come from. They were not able to get to, whoever's in charge of their structure was not able to get back to me to say, here's how we appoint and fill vacancies. So the purpose today is really not to approve the, or the uh, company, y'all already done that, is how do y'all want to structure this to put initial members in place? We thought at a minimum, if you put three on there, at least we can get the IRS process going and you can place all of them or a portion of them and I can, we can rewrite this however you want is what I'm trying to say. This is only a draft. It's not our, that's not us presenting this to you. It's just here's the draft, what do y'all want to do? And we'll do whatever you tell us to do. Okay. And it sounds like we just kind of like start the application process with the IRS so we can move that down the path. That takes about how many months? Six? Well, I think on a, I think uh, uh, on a good day, less than six months. On a bad day, more than six months. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, board of commissioners are the okay with moving down the path on this, at least the application process for the Internal Revenue Service. Yes, I got one question. I want to go back to the accounts that we're giving. You okay. Is, so we're creating that, a new agency out in the community. We're going to appoint this board. I'm like. But why are we doing this? Why can't you just encourage people out in the community to formulate this? And, and it's just sort of, <coughs> well, I mean, it's, it's just, a, a, and I appreciate the effort, but it, it, it's running counter to, well, embrace people that are already out there just trying to position themselves and, and go ask and acknowledge that versus this. And it's sort of how you're wielding the decision making. It's like, well, I don't, I'm looking at this, I'm like, but. Why are we creating an eight? Why are we creating an agency when we're told we weren't supposed to early? See, that's my problem. When you get conflicting counsel in moments, and it's just like you're just wielding this. Like, wait a minute, we, we, we the board can't do this. Well, didn't Colin already set out to do this? And since she's an employee, she's on our behalf. 
And now we're back here, and it's sort of this back and forth, back and forth. You see, that, that's the problem when I'm, when, when I'm listening. I'm like, come on. What's the real motive here? Because I don't see the fulfillment. I see the movement of money versus the fulfillment of what we're trying to get done. Let's be inclusive of people in the community. Let's be broader in how we, we communicate versus all this. And that's the only reason I'm like, I, I just, I, I, I'm not. So this is just, I mean, it's nothing for somebody to foul and go through the motions. This is not a big deal. I'm like, but why are we doing this? To your point, like, the board of commissioners can't do this. We can't, make, but what we can't, uh, what did they say? We couldn't appoint, we couldn't appoint that $25,000. It started with that. We can't give somebody that. Like, well, why not? You've given development authority money. Why can't you? Now we're going to create a firm in which we, it's like, okay, well, what was the difference? And, and, and that's my, mm, I just, I, I, I need cooperation in my, in my vote. It's like, I just need some cooperation. I shouldn't have to struggle. Well, we're the ones responsible staffs there to implement, not try to direct. That, that, I, 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 I'm like, come on, guys. And that's my point. We're still sitting here like, y'all, mm, I'm, I'm not. I mean, that's on y'all. You don't want to move on this right now as far as creating this. What if a firm pops out, out there? With, I mean, again, I said my, to my peers, I said, well, why don't you put an RFQ out there and let somebody formulate around this and let them step up for this. Why are we creating government? Why won't, won't we just let somebody step up and we do it that way? Make it fair and open versus just orchestrated like we're just going to, like, I mean, I get it. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but why are we doing this? Why are we incurring the expense? To your point, tax dollars. Why are we? I mean, I have no problem. It ain't like we couldn't do it, but I'm just like, but why are we doing it that way? Give give other people opportunity. Anyway, I'm done with this, guys. This is long. I'm done. I'm out. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> I, I was just uh, yes. I was just wondering how long would it take for our RFQ for, mm -hmm. for this? Mm -hmm. Like that would be add it later. So. Would you happen to know about chance? No, I can look into it for you. I'll get back with you. Can you? Okay. Okay. Um, but in the meanwhile. Yeah. But in the meanwhile, yeah. Yeah, but see, this is just like, right, we're talking about something that's in the future. We ain't got to worry about this. That's what I'm saying. Why we, this ain't the pressing issue here. The, the formation of this, this new agency is not the, it really is what you, all right. But Take two weeks. I mean, this was already, that was for 32, 33. Um, the comment was made that um, you guys already approved the creation of this agency. I'm like, when did we do that? What date did the Board of Commissioners <coughs> approve the creation of this agency? It was in the May or June. March or May. May. I think it was May. That's how I got it right here, I think. Okay. So we already approved this one. Yeah. I mean, what did we approve? This was to approve this one. <coughs> you do what? This one item is just to approve the structure of the number eight, right? So May 7, 2019, authorization to allow the tourism department for, to file for, to file to incorporate a nonprofit 501c6 organization as Douglas County Travel and Tourism as the official destination marketing organization for the purpose of receiving hotel motel tax revenues in compliance with the Department of Community Affairs. So that was right. May 7th. So again, why wasn't Colin allowed to do that back then? Why are we overriding her very function? One more time, it's like we're trying to clean up someone. Really, she should be part of the commission, but I'm okay. I get the history why that didn't work out. I'm gonna let that go. Now we're trying to create this new committee, and which I'm fine with. That. I have no problem to put her in a proper house. But it's like I, I just wanted to be clear on what, what we're trying to clean up here. This is not our issue. Meaning we're looking at this guy. We're cleaning something. I'm like, y'all think y'all see how? Look at this. And so I'm just not going like, okay, it's just, I'm just going like blink. And now I'm done. Commissioner, do you have anything? No, I got Okay. You know, okay, because I need to move on. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say they didn't move on anyway. Okay. <laughs> but, but, what, but what are we doing? I don't know what. No action until the next meeting. Right. So that's the end. So we're clear. 
31, 32, and 32. Yeah, and we, and we need to pay your bill. We need to pay. Oh, no, no. Bill's being paid. Like I said, you know, do we got to do on that again? But I just want to make sure mm -hmm. what we're talking about. So we, we all leave here. You're in that battle Right. So we got something. Okay, well, what we're going to do is this, I'm going to make an executive decision. And we're just going to move on. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to clarify what we're planning to do. 31 has been tabled. Uh, 30. Three has been tabled. Thirty-two, just a section. We want to pay our bills, but we still need to look before we move too quickly. Where it says approve a, a mutual termination, we, we want to. We still got to talk about that as well. So it sounds like they're all on here for two weeks, but we need to move forward and pay our bills, which is with the development authority. So that needs to be done immediately. Pay our bills. So uh, in two weeks, November 18th, we have to make a firm decision. We must go on and then I have no problem with moving it up to a vote because we got to vote and move on and whatever plans out in that vote, that's the vote. And we got to move on. Okay. Next, um, I believe anything else from the Board of Commissioners before I call for an executive session? Oh, I like that. <coughs> Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. I want to go back to item number 10 and 11. Mm -hmm. That I, I would sleep on. <laughs> uh, the county administrator of business. Yes. That we had a, a little brief discussion after I after we kind of broke for a minute or two, whatever that was, we did for two minutes. So these two items, can, first, I, as I asked the question of you guys, okay, how long of the the, the, the forty thousand dollars? How many miles are this? Who decided on how this process will take place as to we got to this point? Versus, I was asking the committee chair of uh, transportation where and how did what was his relation into this so i'm assuming nobody knows so i just want to know kind of where we are before we move before i can move forward with 10 and 11. Okay. so initially all commissioners had input into um what went on this list understood um so that's what's on here um tuscany hills uh no sorry 166 so highway 166 <coughs> It's approximately 10 miles. I just did a little short, quick desktop thing. I didn't zoom in, but it's approximately 10 miles mm -hmm. from Tuscan Hills all the way to Highway 5. So normally that would cost, according to Greystone's numbers, 40000 per mile. So that's $400,000, which would eat up almost all of the 500000 that was allocated for street lot. Got it. So, we were already working on all the street lights on the, the cost estimates, or actually the cost, the actual cost, mm -hmm. from Greystone, and the number that was left over was two hundred, right at 250000 mm -hmm. which is a little more than half mm -hmm. of what would normally be installed mm -hmm. if we requested street lights. Got it. On 166 only. But, but did the committee come up with where we are as a total decision or did it individually we decide to the total for 166 or the total yeah, for the <coughs> no, that was based on discussions the chairman and i had okay and this is just proposed this is no decisions been made this is what's proposed to the board usually highway five you mean to the 166 from tuscany hills to highway five So, and, and, and that's my concern, though. I, I just want to make sure that we make a decision, not just you and, and chair make a decision as to what the final result of that would So be. each individual commissioner submitted mm -hmm. submitted streets and I intersections. Got that. Got that part. So the board had decided on any of them, any, anything that's on here. And that's what I submitted as my package, was mm -hmm. the lights on the intersections for the <coughs> interstates. And I said that 166 Tuscany Hills because of students going back and forth from New Manchester High. It's extremely dark right there. Mark, I'm not sure if you need to go all the way to Highway 5 because I was just thinking maybe cap it off at that Chapel Hill intersection because that's where you, most of your school, the children travel from New Manchester to the Chapel Hill. So would that tighten the price down? Would that condense the cost tremendously? Uh, I would have to look through the distance between those. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was focusing just on the children it traveling. Is, it could. Yeah, okay. But I'm, I'm back to the to, to chairman uh, of transportation. Where are you staying on this? Um, I, I was not aware of this part right here. Okay. So this is what my question was. Okay, one more time. 
seven and a half miles, but 120 <laughs> lights on Riverside cost us what? Now we're talking about six hundred something. Oh, four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that's what I'm get, get me the math. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know what we're comparing. So again, I haven't been involved in any of this. Meaning, this was yes, we agreed, we agreed to the package of extra money for intersections and lighting. And everybody did get the email and they did submit mm -hmm. whatever they wanted and I sort of just yielded to y'all. I was mm -hmm. pretty cool because I had Riverside. So that's all I've heard. So now we're at a point of action. So I don't know anything about this negotiation though. And that's right. the thing that like, okay, now how did Greystone and George Power get the deal? Now, now interesting, again, George Power had <coughs> just based on territory. So look, you, 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 you're breaking that up for them. Mm -hmm. Look, everybody get Nikki. You're not just concentrating in one area. You're like, okay, well, Jordan Powell yeah, I want to get in on this. See, my point, be consistent. Right, so if somebody else wants to eat, you expanded the territory. Right? So, that, that, I mean, Greystone could have just locked it all up, but y'all you know, decided to break it up and make, make it fair. But to your point, Commissioner Richard, I was, because I've been applying the same logic. I, I, I was not involved, so I, I can't answer. This did not come before the committee. And that's why, I, that was my biggest concern. And that's why, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't really realize it had to go to the committee, but we, this was the same process we followed to approve the, the lights on I-20. I the really same process. What about Riverside? What was that process? Um, that was just, that was one road. And that I just went to the process. board, it went to the board for approval. Mm -hmm. But that was a mild concern. It just I, 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 I wasn't quite clear as to the miles, how many miles, and who negotiated a deal that only, only that none of us were aware of. <coughs> yeah, it's just a proposal. Well, I mean, proposal, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, well, I mean, we can put whatever. If y'all want to do the full four hundred thousand for for one hundred sixty six from Tuscany to Highway Five, we can do that. It's just a a lot of these other intersections and streets will have to be removed. And I'm not saying it was always hard for, I'm not saying that. I'm right. not saying it just from the negotiating perspective, how many of us in the room knew about where, where you guys were, not where we were. That's all. Nobody until now. Right. <coughs> but that's where the problem lies. Okay. As a clarifier, mm -hmm. so I got 10 miles, 400,000. I'm going to know how many lights that is. Compared to seven and a half miles, I want to know the cost of, of, of Riverside and versus and 120 right. lights. We've got and two variables that are missing to right. show a true comparison Correct. to see a cost per is it, is it is it is it more cost prohibitive to do them all or, or, or not? I mean, two miles versus one mile? <laughs> and I, I guess I wasn't a part of the process, so I don't know. I can only go by what you're telling me. So. But that's why if it had went through committee, at least that would have been a recommendation from these guys saying what that is and why. Okay. Well, we can surely take it to committee. And I can find out how many lights that is per mile. Absolutely. <coughs> compared to the Absolutely. I just don't have that information. Absolutely. I'm good with that. I just can't answer your question. I know you're yeah. asking for something that I can't answer. And uh, so you know the intent was not to knock any of their lights off the base. Yeah. No, it was not. That's and, not and, the intent. And, and, and I don't even think that's the intent. It's just that I just, there's a process in my head. I'm, I'm looking for the process of how we got to this point, that's all. And based on your conversation, that's how you guys got to that, to that point, not how we got to that point. Yeah, okay. okay. I got so we'll, we'll hold off on that then, I guess. So we'll, we'll just move this one to the next agenda or two. Sounds good. More information. And we approve my lights on the, on the intersection first. We, we both on those lights. Yes, and they're working on those. So, thank you. And we're, we're gonna move forward. Current, and we'll get a schedule as soon as they get the uh, permit from okay. Judah. Thank you. We're going to move forward. So you all can continue to talk about these lights in the districts and we'll go from there. But um, I know district commissioners, uh, I know you've already identified your areas and then we'll come back and talk. Again, like I said, you can scale back a little bit on that Tuscany uh, area if you would like, but I still want to make it very clear this meeting that I am representing students that are 16 years old and over that's driving through that area that's extremely dark. I've had to give a pass to a 16-year-old that is 35 years old now, and I want to make sure that they have adequate light coming from those schools after being after cheerleading practice and band practice, or whatever type of football practice, what have you, because I want to give the parents and the mothers and fathers 
some relief. We'll move on to the next one. Um, no, I, excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes. I don't think, Commissioner don't, don't, don't give them the wrong conception of what I'm trying not to give some cheerleaders, whomever else, lighting. That's not the purpose. I was just trying to get the process together of what this is, how did you come up with your numbers, and why and where. Now, uh, I think each one of us have what I call a vote to decide on or, or, or recommend what that is. And I think everybody in this room would say, make sure that these guys are, are, are there's enough lighting for any and everybody. But there still is a process. It's not just what you say or I say. It's what we say. That's all I'm saying. And I understand. So with that, um, to say what is going to happen without the approval of this board is a different conversation to have versus do something outside of this board recommending. And maybe I'm getting it wrong. But the process is what's being done and spent, whatever that is, will be the process <coughs> of this board, not the process of Madam Chair or Mr. Robinson or anybody else is what we decide. That's all. Okay, just uh, thank you so much, Commissioner. Just want to clarify, I submitted that street the same time the rest of y'all submitted your streets. I was compiled. Uh, I am a commissioner just like you. And therefore, I that's what I submitted when you submitted your list. If you want to toggle with mine, I'm okay with that. Oh, of course, sure. that, that's okay. fine. But I'm just saying I didn't violate any process. I was just on point with you. And everybody, all the other commissioners, you said, submit a list. I gave Mark my two little areas that I was concerned about. The interstate was one, and that one particular area. So we all did it at the same time. So I'm going to move on, and we're going to go into the next. And if there's not, no other discussions, we'll just go on to. OK, but for clarity, if I was right, point of order. Yes. So where are we now, just because of what you said to go ahead and do? So should I say? or the interstates that I was speaking of, just going to do mine as well, with that what we're telling you. I'm just making for clarity. That's not how it works. That's all, I'm not, I'm not asking for it. No. So. But yours are wrong here too. I know that. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sorry, I'm not Right, right, no, no. <laughs> I'm only saying, just understand the process. So if that's the case then, what Vice Chair Robinson, Ms. Clark and everybody else just say, okay, we'll go ahead and finish mines and we'll work and you guys have along the other stuff. I'm just telling you, Madam Chair, that's not how it works. And I'll leave it at that. You know what? My husband, the Marine, says she always has to win. Let me let me say something to you, Mark. When you brought up the Tuscany Hills, my neck, my streets were just mixed, that particular street was mixed with the remainder of the lights. How is this discussion being magnified with I haven't violated any process? That list, my street was in there with everybody else. I just guess you could just kind of highlight the fact that if you go all the way to Highway 5 that it was going to cost more. Is that what you were doing? Yes, because <laughs> I haven't, given, the any, thing I haven't be, given him any approval to buy, to do anything. Yeah. It would be the full amount because we had to cut it back in order to stay under budget. Right, so you can scale it back to whatever you have to do to do it. I just want to make sure we capture that section. But I haven't asked uh, anything to be moved without uh, approval from the Board of Commissioners, I believe he was just highlighting the fact that my request was a little ambitious and he didn't want to capture his, if he captured that whole quarter from Tuscany all the way to five, it was going to erode some of y'all's uh, request. So what we'll do, I'll scale back because I believe in compromising and negotiating and that's what we'll do, okay? So let's move on to the next item. Board uh, Attorney, do we need to go into executive session? We did, Madam Chair, for legal matters. And um, but I don't think, I think, Mark, are you clear what, what we're talking about here? Because it seemed like there's still a question. Yes, well, I've got some homework to do. I'm going to check on it. I've got to talk to Grace down and get some numbers and then bring it back through for me, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can all decide on what, mm -hmm. what that looks like as a whole. Yeah. Okay. And not as a, okay, as a whole. Mm -hmm. One point of clarity. Okay. This is easy for us. Mm -hmm. we, we had a situation like this with um, well, Georgia Power when uh, this goes with uh, with our ever energy audit. Remember, this is before you when staff tried to pit something through here uh, with no detail. Mm -hmm. We had called out like 
And he was like, how do you award a contract to somebody to negotiate and nobody gets to see it? So sometimes we, we sort of sensitive to maybe what we think they, they perceive as a sleight of hand. It's not you, but I, I mean, there's a historical where, okay, well, wait a we're awarding contracts at that amount. What is the rule? What is our purchasing? How does that go down? It was just awarding of the contract. Now they're looking at me, I'm like, I don't know anything about this. I, I, I don't. So I, I get, we're all tied in this to a certain degree, so I'm saying, I get it. I get the point. Mm -hmm. it, it was just awarding a contract with somebody that we're going to split this money between you. It's like, I don't know nothing about that. I don't know how to go down. It goes above our, our, our signing authority, our thresholds. Well, I know the <coughs> policy is not in place yet, so I'm going to just pause for a second. It's just, it, it, it was more of that process, like, it's not you. I don't know you're not supposed to be awarded no contract like that, not to know two firms above that amount. Ain't nobody saw this. That, and so you're putting this, you, this is being treated unnecessarily. It's like, uh, So that's just me, like, points all the way around. <coughs> I don't think it was intended, but it was just, it, it, it could have been a better way. We good now. Yeah, I'm going to the next session. So you're bringing to the next meeting? It was like, you know. Yeah, hopefully you can make it. Kind of get to the committee and all that. Madam Chair, I got one thing. Yes. So the guy, the um, person from Bose on item number nine cannot be here tomorrow, so we're going we're gonna to move that to the next meeting. Okay. So that will be. This number nine is going to be right. All right. Sounds like uh, you, we have homework <coughs> things at 10 and 11, but I just wanted to make it very clear to the public. I have nothing, there was no preconceived notion of, any, of anything. Mark is working on these projects. I just happened to uh, add two more sections with the rest of the remainder of the Board of Commissioners. So it sounds like we want some clarity and it comes before the transportation committee. And, 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 and I just want to say though, Madam, Madam Chair, see that's where, <laughs> that's where it kind of gets a little diluted to make sure we understand not that what you said, what you did is wrong or right. It's how this process works. And for me to just add mine because I want it done and we'll work out everything else, that's not how it works. It works where we decide uh, what this money that's being spent, whether it's Fairburn Road, uh, intersection, or uh, um, off ramps, or not. But we decide on what that is. So I, I, I'm not saying scale back on, I know Fairburn Road, uh, Lee Road uh, intersection, uh, or off ramps, because of the mere fact of trying to allow these two guys to get something in. That's not how it works. So. I'm saying, bring it all back so we all can have a discussion about it. We all decide on what that is, and then we all decide on, okay, let's move forward. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not trying to put in danger a cheerleader or a football player. I just want to make sure what the process is that we all agree upon it. That's all. Now, I'll go back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to think. We need, you already said yes. Go into the session. We need to go into the session. Yes, ma'am. For legal and for real estate. And Mark, you clear where we're going. Mm -hmm. No way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So moved. In second. We have a motion in the second. All in favor. Aye. Please raise your right hand by saying aye. Take aye. 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 Okay, Board of Commissioners, so if we have anything else to discuss, we really appreciate your time and talent today. Anything else to discuss? Okay. With that being said, this meeting is adjourned.